What's up, everybody? Welcome to PSI Love You XOXO, episode 15. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the OK Beast Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. Now, Greg, I was asking Kevin this before the show, but I didn't ask you. What do you think? Hat? No hat. Now, I personally like you without the hat. I think you, you oh. let it roll. Yeah, but I don't want to get in the way of your style. Kids have mm-hmm. style these days. When Boo, I was growing up, we did. Greg's you know, got we bad had two opinions. turnips and we called Boo. it a life. So that's what it was. Excuse me, Kevin, I'm speaking. Boo, Greg has bad <laughs> well, opinions. Speak. First off, I'm just saying. Boo. You've I'm been way making a lot of shows from home for the last few weeks. We've seen you I head have. on. We've seen you head off. Don't worry about it. You get a chance to do it again tomorrow. Do what you want with I it. I mean, that's a good point. It's just the thing of like, I have... I have multiple hats, but this is the only hat that I have available to me that, that's that's out of the boxes. If I want to get another hat, I got to go digging. And I kind of like what the hat's doing for me for this like work from home sure. setup because I feel like it's, it adds an extra dynamic because my room is very boring. I don't have any yeah. posters up. I don't have right. like the flowers like you got. I don't have the peep. Sure, um, which yeah, I don't know if I'm yeah. supposed to acknowledge the people or not, or that's you just can, supposed to be a, a background. You know what I mean? I think it's kind of insensitive yeah. that everybody else seems to have one except you and Kevin. Like I think. That's... Yeah, I've been waiting on my peep, but I, oh wait, no, Kevin has a peep. Oh, you got a peep. Why does have a peep? Why don't I get a peep? I don't. That's a Nick thing. Did Ke- Kevin? Did Nick finally give you that peep, or is that peep from something else? Uh, yeah, Nick gave me the peep. Huh. So Nick oh, just wow. left blessing. Yeah. Yes. Wow, but that's, I, uh, I heard today on that hurts on some show that the peeps were going away. Well, yeah, I, we Jen and I talked about that, and we have cool friends yeah. because, of course, now you know Easter is over. Well, I I didn't know they were Easter pe- peeps. That's what peeps are Easter, unless they're the Halloween peeps, you know. But those are pumpkins. Wait, these are bunnies. What about regular peeps? Um, regular peeps are Easter. That's an Easter candy. Yeah, what? aren't peeps just the bunnies in that shape? Isn't that, isn't that just well, all they make, peeps? They make it's the birds dove. too. They make a dove. Right? Is it a dove or is it just a, a chickadee? You know what I mean? Just some it's a generic... chickadee. It's a chickadee. Yeah. Okay. It's weird because like we're it's supposed weird. to be working from home, so he's not on a show. You know? Yeah. Weird. No, he's definitely just it's doing got nothing little, right now. It's got a little you know, sand sack right, right here. Please leave me a message. And I'll get back to you. Well, they want to make sure you can sit up straight. See? You hear that? At the tone, please record your message. I do. Hear, yeah, I hear the sand stack. You may hang up or press one It's where his perineum would be. Hey, uh, Nick Scarpino, it's Greg Miller from PS I Love You XO. Hey, Nick. We, we're live on the air Hi, right Nick. now, and we were wondering why Blessing is the only on camera kind of funny person you didn't give a peep to. Because even Kevin has it. And I, I you know, Kevin's, well, I guess it, it, the screencast stuff, that makes more. I'm just saying, like, you I feel like Blessing's yourself. on a lot of shows. Yeah. So you should have had a peep as well. And now, of course, I'm going to show every closed. day. Halloween's over, or whatever, Easter's over. So we wanted to know why you don't like Blessing. All right. Just want to know why. Thank you. I think we all know why. What's the reason? Uh, is because I'm 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 gunning for him. I'm replacing him slowly, slowly oh, but surely. I'm replacing okay, him. Good. Yeah. I, I didn't know that one. Sensitive place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, do I go for age or do I or like do I go for race or what? Where do I go if I want to if I want to uh, take Nick down? That felt like one of those videos friendly. of like we all know why, and then it's like almost like. <laughs> Why? Why don't we know? You know what I mean? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is PSI. Love you. XOXO. When we're not insulting. Oh, hold on. Nick's calling us back. Uh, Nick Scarpino, you're on PSI. Love you. XOXO. Only I can uh, talk to you, though. No, everybody else can hear you. You won't be hearing anybody else. Hey, finally, Nick. Finally, I Hi, get Nick. an official invite to be on this show. I've said a lot of times that this show would be 100% better with 100% more Nick. Right. Now, what we were wondering is... Is it a race thing, an age thing? Why won't you give Blessing a peep? Why won't I give Blessing a peep? But I've told Blessing they only had one peep left at the Target. I bought it for Kevin. I was too lazy to take it over to Kevin's house, so I left it on his desk. When Blessing said I want a peep, I said, Blessing, just drive over to the studio right now and get it. And I swear to God, he didn't do it. <laughs> I vaguely remember this. This okay. sounds about right. Blessing says it sounds right, actually. He, he, he recants his statements. And anything you might have lobbed your way as to why you hate him. Yeah, it's a sh- again, again, sheer laziness. Okay. On all sides, everyone was lazy. Yeah, this is totally a lazy situation we're in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks I'm, so much. That bet, makes sense. I'm willing to bet that Pete is still on Kevin's desk if he wants to go get it. Today. Oh no, no, no he, Kevin got it. That's the thing is, Kevin's been rubbing it in Blessing's face that he has a peep. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Well, you can always give him your peep. 
No, we won't be doing that. Doing that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is PS I Love You XOXO. Each and every week, me and Blessing Eddie Oye Jr. come together to talk about all things PlayStation with you. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can, of course, submit your questions. You can su- support your opinions. You can put in your uh, PSN profiles to be judged along with maybe a little bit of trophy time with us. Uh, of course, you can get the show ad-free. You can get it with the exclusive post show. That's all on patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. However, if you have no bucks to toss our way, it's no big deal. You can get the show for free each and every Tuesday. YouTube.com slash kindoffunnygames. Rooster Teeth and podcast services around the globe. I don't want to hit as hard. I'm on a glass table. because Greg, can I ask you a question? Uh, when, blessing, when, I want you to know that I run an open workspace and I have an open office policy. So whatever you want to ask, you shoot. Now, when you did We Have Cool Friends with Jen, did you change your microphone setting so that it's like surround sound? I did, and I didn't send it back. Did you change it back? No, I forgot. Thanks. That's what I, yeah. I would expect Kevin to do. Yeah, I just noticed. I was like, he sounds different. I, I couldn't put my finger on why you would, but that, that popped oh, in my head. I was no, just it's like, oh, it's weird. He sounds quieter, right? but the mic is My game might be different. You want me to mess with my game? Kevin, what do you want me to do? You might be fine. It might just be a position why, thing. Why are you using this desk instead of the real desk? Um, We did. We have cool friends here, and I wanted both of us on camera. And the desk over there doesn't have the space to get the camera far enough mm. back to keep us in the shot. Mm. So I moved the whole setup here. And did then you notice so that the angle was off? To upload everything. Like to right now, you're everything. not in center. I had to upload everything. And when I uploaded everything, it took so long that I couldn't move the computer back to its normal setup. Hmm. 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 And then you're saying I'm not centered in the sh- in the frame. You just you're slightly to the left. I just thought it'd be you know you, as producer you'd you you'd hold down Alt and then drag it in and uh, you know crop it and you'd make it because I remember when Andrea was on the show you did that for her. And yeah, but her setup it. you know I mean she was zoomed out so far I had to do that's something. True. Yeah, that's Andrea true. was on the other see, side of the room. <laughs> you see Jean Drake in the background doing his work. Ah <laughs> 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 oh, man, housekeeping for you. Uh, PS I love you XOXO <laughs> has a new shirt on kind of funny.com slash store. Uh, go check it out right now. Many sizes sold out because again, PS I love you XOXO is the most popular thing kind of funny ever does or ever put on a t-shirt. Uh, if you already don't have, if you don't have your size over there, if you help us out and you'd help yourself out, if you went over there and you said, notify me when it's back. Cause, uh, RT uses that to be like, Oh, maybe we should order more of these shirts, even though they already know they should order more of the shirts. Cause remember it's the design from the sweatshirt, but now it's on a t-shirt. It's pretty hot. Uh, you should also be like our Patreon producers. We can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, support us and get your name read. Just like Mohammed Mohammed, AKA Momo, James Hastings, Evan Ballard, Steven Insler, Sancho West gaming, Duval King, Jabub, Cody Banks, the secret agent, Trent Berry, Max Blair, Julian, the gluten-free gamer, Tom Bach, Nano Support, Michael Bradley, and Joseph O. Youssef. Today, we're brought to you by our sponsor, kindoffunny.com slash Mizzou, but I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with this week's X's and O's blessing. What are you bringing to the table? Greg, last week, Sony announced their new PlayStation 5 DualSense controller in the world lost Universally, universally, everybody's like, this is beautiful. I love it. It's perfect. Do you guys want me it's to perfect. do the PlayStation 5 watch? Sure. Hit it. You know what? Yeah, um, go for it. I mean, oh, I'm still on top. Do it again, Kevin. No, it's coming this time. Do it. It's fine. <laughs> oh, no. I wanted you in it, Kevin. I like. I- I per I personally appreciate <laughs> I that if the, the PS5 the PS5 watch graphic pops up and it's just Kevin Dunn smiling <laughs> in the lower corner. Perfect. What a uh, good oh, Kev Kev, right, that was real good. Um, Greg, we've talked all about the PS5 DualSense controller and other shows. Sure and we've 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 given our thoughts. I think overall, both of us like it. I'm I wouldn't say I like it, but I also don't think I hate it. It's one of those I won't. I want to feel it. I want to have it in my hands and go from there because so much of this is going to be about how it feels, right, and how it actually controls. Yes. And I, I, you know, I was on a DLC last night uh, with Jeff, Jeff and Christian, and one of the things I was talking about there is I brought up that blog post again because again the statement in there from the senior vice president, right, of being like, you know, the challenge is making it feel small, even though it looks bigger, and that's my mm-hmm. biggest thing is looking at it. And granted, I'm not saying it's you know bigger than the Xbox controller bigger than a pro controller for Nintendo or anything. It just looks heftier than my dual shot. Looks pool. bulky a bit. Yeah. And that's the thing is yeah. I want to feel what that actually feels like. I, I believe obviously in trust in PlayStation to have done their ergonomics and all that stuff and make sure it doesn't feel like crap, but I'm not in love, but I'm also not in hate with it. 
Yeah, I'm I'm in a similar place where I actually the more and more I look at the picture of the controller, the more and more I like it. At first, I I wasn't really feeling it, mainly yeah. because of the color scheme. Um, and mainly because it just struck me as like a weird, uh, like a weird step. Like it seems like they stepped really far from the PS4 controller in a way where where I'm like, okay, why? But the more and more I look at it, the more and more I'm like, no, this thing this thing looks like it's gonna be comfortable. I like I have mixed thoughts on the two tone design, which we'll get into get into uh, in a second. But overall, like. I, I think I like it, but yeah, it's gonna be one of those things where I'm gonna have to hold it in my hands. But see, to figure out like how like, I really I don't feel. think anybody at PlayStation or anybody who makes any product wants you to come away with the impression. I think I like it. You know what I mean? True. Like, I, yeah. I hate having it when you're like trying to sell yourself on something. And like again, so much it'll be in action, having it, seeing how the light bar actually works, coming around the touchpad, and uh, you know what exactly the create button's all about. Yeah, and so let's we'll get into the features because what I want to do, instead of just talking about it, I want to rank the features of the mm. PS5 DualSense controller. And so what I've done is I've gone to the PS blog, I've I've parsed out the different, uh, what they had to say about the different features, and I sure. bullet pointed them. And okay. so I have them narrowed down to like like five or six different features that we'll, we'll rank and we'll, t- we'll talk about them. The ultimate ranking of the DualSense features is what you're saying we're about to do. Yes. Love it. Yes. So let's start off uh, with the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers, which I'm bundling as one feature since they both kind of work hand in hand. The PS blog writes, we had a great opportunity with the PS5 to innovate by offering game creators the ability to explore how they can heighten that feeling of immersion through our new controller. This is why we adopted haptic, haptic feedback, which adds a variety of powerful sensations you'll feel when you play, such as the slow greediness of driving a car through mud. We also incorporated ad- adaptive triggers into the L2 and R2 buttons of DualSense so you can truly feel the tension of your actions, like when you draw a bow, a bow to shoot an arrow. Horizon. Two. It's a Horizon Zero Dawn That's thing, and I'm just guessing two. the car thing is just any other car Gran game, Turismo. but Gran Turismo well, probably specifically. Really Maybe Motorstorm is back. How would you feel about uh, these features specifically? Because this isn't necessarily new to this blog post. This is a thing that they've oh, touched yeah, no, on this before. This is one of the first things they brought up, right? When they were yeah. like, let's start this <laughs> this ivy drip of information. How can we actually get you this information in, in a way that gives you something to go on? This is, I want to learn from the past. However, it makes it so hard because this reads like stereo instructions. Like, you know, we've had, you know, tension and controller buttons for how long? We've had rumble for how long? You feel, we had six access at one point or, you know, we still do, I guess, with gyroscopes. But like how game changing is haptic feedback and adaptive triggers actually going to be? I say mm-hmm. all that and I am, in fact, impressed by HD rumble or whatever the hell it is on the Switch, right? Where like they made a big deal about like, is there one ice cube or two ice cubes? And you watch mm-hmm. that in a demo and you're like, that seems really weird and stupid. But then you play the game and I actually do appreciate like the you know, the example I'll give is and this is a switch one, obviously, because I'm talking about the switch. Um, when I was playing Animal Crossing for review and I was fishing so much that the one point when I caught the giant fish that everybody puts up, I think an oar fish, right? When I had a bite on that, I was, you know, multitasking, watching a show and playing, I got it and the way it rumbled totally shook me like what the fuck's going on like it was it Mm -hmm. literally did tell me something was different and i had to look at my screen i had to pay attention to what was about to happen like that stuff does matter but i don't know it's not sexy right it's just not sexy to talk about yeah it's one of those things where it seems like this is what these are the core features that they're basing this controller around which i find very interesting because they don't seem that mind-blowing or like dynamic like i do i do like specifically the the triggers right i I like the idea that the triggers are going to have rumble in them because as somebody who i really enjoy the forza games on xbox and xbox does have that they do have the rumble in the triggers that does make a difference in driving games like it's not like it doesn't change the game in in any crazy sort of sort of way but it adds like a cool feeling of like when you're drifting or when you're breaking like the ways in which you get that feedback out of the triggers i think does feel great and i think it's an awesome awesome thing that the ps5 is a adapting that for dual sense but yeah it's one of those things where it's like okay cool it's not like you said it's not sexy same with the haptic feedback thing like you know you look at the switch with the hd rumble and it's a similar thing of aside from one two switch i can't really think of games that use hd rumble in a very dynamic or interesting way like it, it seems like one of those things that you put on you put on the back of the box and it's like okay cool hd rumble but in actual practice it doesn't it doesn't change anything really 
Um, and I'm curious since, like, because uh, let me ask you this question. Do you get yeah. the same thing that I'm getting from it being called dual sense? that, yeah, the haptic feedback and the L2 and R2 triggers are kind of the the center of what is what what is going to drive this this controller as the future PlayStation controller? I mean, and you're trying to attach that to the name because they're talking about these two yeah. things? Like I the, don't. Like the sense of it. No, I mean, I get, I get my, I, you know, the take on it is that they're trying to use all your senses, right? And they're trying to bring it around, like, you know, because even I'm looking at the blog post, right? And they're like, the features of the dual sense, along with this are, they're talking about a new feeling for immersion to players. That's what I took it from, even just at a glance, right? Is that, sure, they're saying dual, but it's because they're going off of dual shock. The dual shock, yeah. You see there, and then saying that it's going to be all about your senses. And I think you see that with the way they're talking about in, in it's a, a bigger picture thing of, the feedback, the uh, the triggers, uh, the way they're doing sound differently this time around, right? Like it, more than anything, what I see from the controller is, and I understand it's early. Mm -hmm. One of the in, the first uh, at bat they have, they've hit it here in terms of what Cerny was talking about of being a revolution and not an evolution. That this is something different. This isn't just okay, cool. We're making a PlayStation Five. It's a sequel to PlayStation Four. It's a sequel to PlayStation Three. They're talking about this somehow being randomly different or not randomly different i'm sorry drastically different and i don't know what that means exactly and i can't say if it actually will be or anything like that but to have start with to have led with haptic feedback and these adaptive triggers right to then talk about the way they're redoing audio to then talk about load times and then talk about this like to change the name of the controller to change the design of the controller i feel is in line with how they're trying to market playstation 5 already and that is the fact that this this ain't your mama's ps4 right like this mm -hmm. is something, something different new. that you need to pay attention to will mm -hmm. that pay off is it all just marketing is it all just buzzwords because you bring it up as well like outside of one two switch did anybody really take that much advantage of it on switch and this isn't a switch podcast so i really know I, and i never did like ring fit i'm not sure well, that was strapped to your leg and shit i don't fucking know yeah but, like it, it yeah there are certain features from the switch that i think like the gyroscopic or gyroscopic things like that stuff was used in stuff like ring fit and like other games but yeah like in terms of the comparative uh features here right the the yeah. rumble the or the haptic feedback i should say the uh the trigger stuff right like i think that stuff specifically the haptic feedback that stuff that i expect to see used in first party games like games yeah. where like sony is going to encourage developers to kind of put, to put that stuff to use because those games are only coming out on playstation sure in but terms of third party much, games i'm how curious how much will it actually be put to use and what will it actually mean right like mm -hmm. is this six axis again where they're gonna get so hung up on it and i have to use the six axis to throw a fucking grenade in uncharted when i'm like just let me throw the goddamn grenade like yeah i i this the is different because it's gonna be a feel to it so it's there, but if I'm playing, if I'm playing, uh, uh, whatever open world, I'm playing Horizon Two, right? And mm -hmm. then I'm also at the same time playing the new Assassin's Creed game. Am I going to be able to tell a difference in terms of how the triggers feel versus? Is it going to yeah, actually yeah. matter? And again, uh -huh. we're talking as if this is a big deal because right now it is the, one of the few breadcrumbs we have to go on. When we get there and you do have, you want to talk about icing on the cake, you do have this amazing cake that is this huge game. And then the icing is the fact that, yep, the bow feels a little bit harder. It gets a little bit shakier as I go. Like, that's all neat stuff that doesn't need to be, you know, a pull quote or a bullet point on the actual review. It can just be something that's there that's adding to the immersion, which is their whole shtick with this, right? Because it's like, uh, and here our vision for how the new controller will captivate more of your senses as you interact with the virtual worlds and PS5 games. They're not saying this is why you buy a PS5. They're just trying to say that this is a part of what is this grander picture. Yeah, I, I could see the the triggers being used, like the the responsive triggers being used more so than the haptic feedback, especially given that Xbox has that on their controller. Yeah. So that's a that that's the thing that I think will will translate. I I'm curious to see how the haptic feedback will will manifest. Though the way I want to do this, though, uh, in terms of the ranking them. Yeah. I'm going to do this in review style, where since we just talked about the haptic feedback and adaptive adaptive triggers, I'm putting no, that on the board. It's our current number one. Number one. Congratulations, haptic feedback. Congratulations. And adaptive you did triggers. It. You the did it. Number one. Can they maintain it the whole show? You'll have we'll to see. To find out. Let's talk about the two-tone design, Put it which in, in the one. blog, 
in the blog they write traditionally our base controllers have a single color as you can see we want a different we went a different direction this time around and decided on a two-toned design greg the controller is mostly white it's white up top with black highlights on the bottom where the trick where the not the triggers where the analog sticks are greg how do you feel about the two-toned design of the ps5 dualsense uh i think it's the most important feature sorry haptic feedback you have to sorry haptic around. feedback uh you had a nice run so you're asking how do i feel about it in terms of my personal opinion of it yeah i think it's cool like i the more i think it was such a stark difference i think it's from what we're used to with dual shock fours and dual shocks of the past that it caught people off guard caught me off guard uh and while i sit there and i'm like i can't wait to hold this and feel what it feels like yada yada i think the look of it is cool i do like the two-tone thing i do like this white on black so far because it is stark and it is different uh, what I like the most about it is that I think it signals what this console is going to look like, or at least what the color scheme of this console is going to be, which I think then gets really interesting. Yeah, um, they wouldn't. I don't think they would do this and then give you an all black or an all white system. So, how is the PS5 using these two colors? How is it using light? You know what I mean? How is it? Is it? Is it doing anything special with that? I think even with the, uh, you know, the PlayStation Four, right? Like. I always love the blue light and, the, and then into the white light for kicking on. I don't like that it always sits there with that orange light when it's just in sleep mode and charging. And I know this is a goofy thing, but if we're talking about like, what are we envisioning overall for this and what is the color palette for the PlayStation 5 and what is this brand's identity? For me with my PlayStation, the orange has never been part of the brand identity for the PlayStation 4. And so if it was blue and white, for sure, of course, I think you see that all the time on stuff, right? Whether it be the back of the PlayStation, you know, blue ads, greatness awaits or whatever, uh, you know, the white of just the light bar, the text, the way blue and they use blue and white all the time in their advertising materials. Like to see them right now, our first glimpse of something PlayStation 5 related be black, white and blue. I hope they commit to that and I hope they use that in a really interesting way with it. You know, I think... Mm -hmm. We've talked about uh, Xbox Series X, right? And that slotted top and the, the green they have of that glow they have of it. Like, I'm fascinated to know what the PS5 looks like because I think it'll be black and white standard and then how they're going to use lights in it. Is it going to not have a cooling unit like a PC, right? But what if one side is exposed and it is blue light pouring out the side or white light pouring out the side, depending on what's happening? Uh, I think that's awesome. And so like, when I look at this, I know the first thing when it went out, so many people talked about it. Oh, it looks like Detroit, Detroit become human, right? And it does. It does look like the Android's in that, which is cool, I think, and gives that futuristic vibe to it and gives that either matte finish or that super slick, almost leather pleather finish to it. And so how do you incorporate that all into the box? And am I reaching too much in, or seeing too, reading too much into this color scheme and the two-tone design? Or in fact, is that what they want me to take away from it? Because they've built it so much. What do you think? Yeah, I... I, I mean, I think 100% the box is going to reflect this two-tone design. I don't necessarily love it. Like, it's... it's, really? it's what, don't you, what don't you like? I, I, I think the, the colors are just placed awkwardly on the controller. Like, that's my main thing. And maybe maybe it is the specific colors they chose here. Maybe if it was reversed in... Or maybe not reversed, because I, like, I, like, I, I don't think I'd like that either. I just don't like it. I just don't like the, uh, like... It seems like 75% of the controller is white, and then, like, you get the 25%. The way that's placed over the thumbsticks, I'm not really. There's something about it that comes off awkward to me. Granted, really? over the over the last week, the more and more I've been seeing it, the more and more I I feel like I've been adjusted to it, and I've I've become more accepting of it. But um, in terms of how it may reflect what the actual PS5 box looks like, that's I I I like that idea even less. Like I could Ooh. I could I could I could deal with um the PS5 controller like being two-tone design like in in this way like this is something that i, that I can i can, I can put up like, with it right i don't know yeah, like, put i'll deal with it yeah like i, I can get past this because this doesn't it doesn't look bad by any means it's just not something that i think looks beautiful if the ps5 is like mostly white with black highlights or if it looks color wise if it looks like it's either all over the place or it's it's doing more than the current consoles are i don't know how i'm gonna feel about that because i like i like the all black i like the fact that Do you like, like black goes with, i could i could go with all white like it's just the fact that black goes with everything right like sure. w like when you have a black console like you don't have the fear that's going to clash with anything else in your entertainment center or if it's or that's going to like stand out right it's the reason why i, I 
like I kind of stay away from special edition consoles when they come out. Like I, I, I was thinking about getting the Spider-Man console when that first came out, but I just had the thing where it's like, well, I already, ha- I also have an Xbox and like it, I, those things aren't going to look good sitting next to each other, like a bright red PlayStation, and a black TV and a black Xbox. Oh, man, you say it, and- I look over there, I see it. And I just love that pop of color. My, my, mm. my red PlayStation next to the, you know, black PS3, the black Xbox one. And, and, and it might be a thing of like, I, I I feel like I could get past it, like well when you when we talk about the Spider Man thing for example right like huh? like I think we're 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 both like in the community of like gamers and nerds and stuff where like what you know you have gamer nerd you have, community represent yeah nerd community we have a, you have somebody you have somebody from the nerd community come into your home and you're like oh yeah you got the Spider Man PS4 and it's like it's dope right and granted I'm not in the place where I'm having like I don't know man normies walking into my room looking at my entertainment center judging everything i got people down here with their martinis they're coming in and their shirt and tie to your, yeah. your one bedroom and tie. With shoes all lined up against the wall nothing on it yeah <laughs> and they look down at my entertainment center and they're like oh you got a you got a spider-man ps4 you like you know it's not, it's not i'm not in that situation but i just feel like like all all black in terms of your electronic devices just is, is a good default and then you, you kind oh, of, of blow things out from there um, my question would be though is have we not won the war but i feel like for years we've talked about video game consoles and controllers and wanted more color at launch i feel like you're right that most people do play it safe and launch the all black box with the all black controller and then we have sit in heaven hall wanting different colors and wanting different uh, 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 uh accessories uh wanting to make it personal right and so i wonder everything you're saying is right you're not wrong but also if you're a video game person, how much do you really care? And like that it's like that. And like you're talking about normies coming in. Like how often do you have to deal with a normie coming in if that doesn't understand you? Like, you know what I mean? Like I like, yeah. like right now I look over and like they come in and they're gonna be offended by my Spider-Man PS4, but not my one room in the Superman <laughs> wall. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so it is this interesting push and pull. And I do think that so much of it is also just acceptance of that might not be what you'd want it to be color wise, but in terms of if there was a flashy color, which I also black and white, I don't think are, I think in a, in, that's why I'd be mm-hmm. surprised, not unsurprised. I should say if it was all black with like a white accent, right? Like if it had like this, like brushed white, I don't know why they would do that, but you know what I mean? Some kind of design mm-hmm. on it that is going to be emblematic of what the PlayStation five is right. Their new branding kind of thing. Anyways, I don't think that, I think that you might not want that in the same way the controller might have been off putting, but then you then a week later you're looking at it, you're like, all right, that's what it is. It's like, and I yeah. do think that like you could make it look fucking cool like this. Yeah. And the, that's the thing I'm kind of holding on to is that this design to me strikes it seems more futuristic. Like we we reference like Detroit Become Human. And I think I've heard people talk about like comparing the controller to like Wally or or something like that, right? Like my my immediate go-to was the was the um, white fudge Oreo. Uh, yeah. I, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, um, and and uh, like, but in in terms of in terms of what we reference or we compare this controller to, usually it's like futuristic things, right? It's like futuristic references are the things I've seen over the last week, which could play to, play to their favor, right? Like like it being not all black kind of takes it out of the realm of like. Yeah, this is just a I don't know, like a like a box in my living room. It being it being it being white with like black highlights dynamic look could bring it into like could could take it from being like, okay, this is just a like a box to like, okay, no, this is a piece piece of futuristic technology. And that's the thing about it where I think you could get if it doesn't look you know if it doesn't look the same as every other box has and even to in some respect right we're seeing xbox do this where guess what it's not just a rectangle well hold on it is just a rectangle (laughs) but it's not just the normalized flat rectangle we've come to expect right it is a we want to look different we want this to feel like a different kind of console and so the same thing here and i think you know the one knock that you see from people with the xbox uh, series x is the fact that I don't want a tower because it won't fit in my entertainment center. It looks ugly like a log on its side. So if it was that PlayStation came at this and we're like, we're going to make you, like you're saying, if you, it's 2020. Like your technology should feel or have that look to it. At least that clean look, right? That sterile look that uh, every science fiction thing reaches for at some point, whether it be Detroit or something else. Like there's something there. And I don't think it's going to be a dramatic, you know, like the floating orb or whatever from the PlayStation 9 commercial way back in the day. I don't think it's going to be that ridiculous, but I do think it's going to be something we haven't seen before. 
Mm. So we'll see. So wh- where do you want to put it in the ranking? Do we put it above or below the uh, haptic feedback triggers or haptic feedback and adaptive triggers? I put that uh, personally. I put it at the top because again, I, and I know really, I I think it's I think it's more I, it's the importance of these design features is what we're talking about, right? Like we're ranking how sure. important each one of these uh, features is. Mm-hmm. I think that I will think about the two tone design raises fascinating questions about what the PlayStation 5 looks like. It's our first glimpse at what the PlayStation 5 in any way, shape, or form looks like, whether it's just a color scheme, whether it's something more. And I do think it's something you will think about more six months after launch than you will the, the haptic feedback and the triggers. Mm. I can get behind that. I can. I, I can. I, I think that's a good point. I'm down to put it below the um, or above the haptic, haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Also, we should acknowledge the, the video quality for uh, video watchers. Because Kevin just uh, slacked us saying that it took a nosedive. Is it bad for you? Because you're terrible for me. I look great though, from what I can see, huh? You're great. pretty. You're pretty I pixely for me. Damn. I mean, I look. I look great to me. No, you look terrible. You're. All, I mean, it's getting uh, worse. You're getting mosaic and you mosaic. You know. Yeah, you. you How also are you guys mosaic-y. so dumb? I don't understand. Obviously, your webcam isn't being streamed over to your computer. It's gonna look like sh- like amazing. Wait, you're telling compared- you're, you're telling me that the way this works isn't that Discord sends my own webcam feed to a server and that server then sends it back to me? You're saying that's not how it works, Kevin? I mean, Kevin, here's what I'm gonna tell you. All right, is I look fucking great. All right, I can see it right here with my own two eyes. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Now, what I was thinking is if I, I looked good on yours, on your little, on your screen capture. No, right? you look like crap. Blessing. Well, I'm saying worse. compared to it's blessing. The, yeah. I compared like to blessing, Clooney. yes. He looks you like Danny look, DeVito. Well, I look like George Clooney. I'm that's sorry, ex- Danny, Danny, holy Danny. shit! You stole the words out of my mouth. I was exactly gonna be like, yeah, he looks like Danny DeVito. <laughs> And then Kevin breaks up, and I can't understand a fucking yeah, word. Yeah, we can't hear a word Kevin's not, saying. Not oh, word. Lord well, the kids almighty. Can. People wanted the garbage truck on fire, and they got it. The kids can. You know? They can hear me clearly hear for the same reason. Because I can't. Oh, I do look mosaic Now, here's the you? thing. Now, here's what we're... Let's talk it all out real quick, everybody. Uh-huh. Because we've, we've had the theory before, right, Kev, that it was that... Well, I guess that wouldn't make sense That's what well, wouldn't make any sense. If you have nitro, and I have nitro. Blessing, do you have nitro? I don't have nitro. It, Should I get only nitro? Only one person needs to have nitro to make that was our idea, right? And look at it now. I don't think that has anything related. I'm just to... saying, let's throw money at the problem. Let's see what happens. I mean, when I, I buy nitro, I'm money. down to you. Nitro, huh? er, <laughs> blessing. You can buy nitro, but on your dime. Oh, if well, it fixes the problem, oh, if it fixes the problem, we'll reimburse you. Ooh, if I it like it. Roll the dice. Wait, we'll wait, hold on. Do I have a choice? This? Do it. Do it. Yeah, do it's it. your Just choice. Toss in the ten bucks right now. If it works do and it. everything gets better, pressure. guess what? You get ten bucks from Kind of Funny. Okay, if how do I buy Nitro? You owe me ten bucks and Kevin ten bucks. Oh, so I lose like thirty dollars total in this wager. On this. It's hey man, you wanted to play the game, right? You're always talking about. I'm down. I love video games. I wasn't listening. Discord nitro i'm gonna go well when i I'm type in go. when i type in discord nitro on google the first suggestion is discord you nitro in, you're in discord right now yeah but i can't find the button in discord to buy nitro what the hell? No, there's a lot of buttons oh you... never mind it's right there it says nitro <laughs> <laughs> i can see it <laughs> all right hey everybody uh, it's greg miller and this is ps i love you xoxo as you know there's a pandemic here and these I was going to say United States, but in the world. In the world. We're working from home, and that means we have to figure things out on the fly, and that's what we're doing right now. If you like this, guess what? You're cool. If you didn't like it, you probably already turned off the show a long time ago. And so fuck those people. Am I right? People who are cool. Yeah, fuck them. Fuck them. They suck. <laughs> God, I hate those people. Yeah. Your mic sounds so quiet. It's so funny because the difference is what? Four inches, maybe three inches? Oh, because it's down here? Yeah. Because it's usually like here? I don't know. Does this sound Did you better? lower the I, gain? I also moved the gain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bring it up a little bit. I asked earlier. Nobody said anything. So here comes the gain. Here comes the gain. Doobie, doobie. Is that better? Yeah. Perfect. There we go. Right, now we got a show. Uh, is Blessing broken? or? No, no I'm, I'm almost there. Clicking on buttons was too hard for me. Huh? Blessing, you don't have to worry about it. We were just kidding. We're never going to. No, but I, I wanna, I'm actually very curious now. Me too? It's what just I got to type in all my payment information and... Uh, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, uh, well, you should just save it. You know, I use PayPal. That's what I use. Uh, well, no, I, I I also use PayPal, but then it took me to Discord where it has all my old uh, info. Uh, Discharge the OKB's company credit card. Nobody will care. Oh, perfect. Oh, you're right. 
Here's my we definitely question. didn't have a credit card. That credit Here's card was just my question. wallet. What up? Now, Kevin. Yeah. You know they got they got the you, you get a boost or something they always talk about I for don't servers. Know what you're talking time. about. There's all these things you can do here, right? What are you get saying? Two server boosts for thirty. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what a boost is either. But I'm wondering what if we made, you know, we made a server just for us. I don't know what that boost means. It. If we all right, so I bought allows I it to progress it. two levels towards levels. Each level gives you perks. Well, that doesn't. I don't give a shit about that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Just explain a little bit more. I don't know what I'm talking about. Are I'm you talking about Discord right now? Yeah, we're still talking about Why Discord. Why are we stopping you're, you're the show about server. for those long, this long? He's just, he's just talking about buying a server farm. Ooh. We, we, we do that. We, can we buy a server for cryptocurrency. Ooh. Also, I, I finished the Discord Nitro. It looks like nothing's different. And well, so I owe fuck. both of you like $10. You owe me $10 yeah. bucks and yeah. Kevin $10. Oh, I see. And then you had to pay $10 for it. I get it. Yes. So that's $30. It's math, Kevin. It's mathematics. Let's talk about the adjusted light bar of okay. the DualSense controller. Uh, in the PS blog, they write, Additionally, we changed the position of the light bar. That'll give, you, that'll give it an extra pop. On DualShock 4, it sat on top of the controller. Now it sits at each side of the touchpad, giving it a slightly larger look and feel. Greg, I like how the how the light bar is working this time around. Yeah, um, no. without having without having used it, obviously, but like, of course, in terms of how it looks, right? Like, what? First of all, the back of the controller being being uh, freed up again and like not doing anything too crazy. Uh, I like it's, it's interesting for what that means for VR, but yeah, I guess that's a that's a question that we'll get an answer to another day. In terms well, of if I can get in on this, because this is something obviously as somebody who loves PlayStation VR, I've been back and forth and around the block with where people, you know, it's already confirmed PlayStation 5 backwards compatible with uh, 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 PlayStation VR. And so then my question was when they debuted this, well, then there's no front light bar to this. How does PlayStation VR see this? But then I've had conversations with people where they're like, well, if it's backwards compatible with PlayStation VR, maybe you just need your DualShock 4s with it to still play any of those. If you need a light oh. bar game like that, you need your light bar game with it. And I was like, that's fascinating. But then it brings up my question about PlayStation VR 2 and what that looks like. And the prevailing theory from people I've talked about is, and I don't know the tech, but it's the one where it's in, out, or out, in. I think it's in out kevin if you understand you chime in for sure but it's basically the idea of how the quest is where it's like you know the lenses are looking all around for it that maybe this time around with playstation vr 2 the idea would be that you don't need the playstation camera to watch you anymore instead the camera the cameras are in the headset is watching, watching your surroundings bar. yeah so yeah, it's like yeah. quest and then it's also oh. what for something where you need the controller controller I don't rather know. than I'm sorry yeah, rather oh, that's that's really cool i didn't even know that sort of technology was being implemented yeah I, and so i guess the, yeah with that, the oculus yeah with quest right so like that that's an interesting wrinkle to it especially for me of that it's still weird because i feel like it's even more cumbersome of hey i bought a playstation i just bought a playstation 5 and now i want to get into a playstation vr and you buy a playstation vr and you bring it home and you unplug it and it's like oh this controller doesn't work for every game with it because it would play for a lot of games it would work but not all and it's like that's when we start getting but i guess i'm also why am I so hung up on PlayStation VR getting bought with PlayStation 5 when in reality it's probably going to be people bringing their PlayStation VR with them? Like the next big boon for PlayStation VR would be the second headset, which you imagine yeah. all bells and whistles. And that's a that's a sacrifice I could see them making, right? Like if you have PSVR 1, in order to use it with the games that require movement from the base DualShock controller, you're going to have to bring forward your DualShock 4 to the PS5 yeah, in order yeah. to use it. And when and we get cares. PSVR 2, that's when everything carries forward. And you hope, yeah, right, that. If, it, if with PlayStation 5 being backwards compatible game-wise, that it's backwards compatible with the controllers, so you have, why would you ever get rid of your DualShock 4s, right? Like, you'd have the the DualSense that comes bundled for you, and then maybe get one for if you have a partner who co-ops all the time, but hold on to your other DualShock 4s, suddenly you have, you know, this library of things ready to go. Yeah. In, in terms of how it looks, you know, I love this way better. Uh, I imagine this would oh, sure. help for battery life. Like, I like how it looks just stylistically as a whole, like in terms of what we were talking about earlier with the futuristic look of the dual sense, right? I think that adds yeah. to it in a way that makes more sense than the dual shock because it was, it was like halfway through the generation, maybe like, maybe like That's a third slid. of the way through the generation yeah. where they added the, yeah, the, the, um, the, what you call across it? the touchpad. Okay. The, yeah. The slit across like the top of the touchpad uh, for later iterations. It does sound dirty, which is why I was like, I don't know if I want to <laughs> repeat that word. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but like I I this lo- this seems like a way better solution. Um what, what I like you're gonna about- have like direct interaction with like you're gonna be able to see it way more clearly. Exactly. Clear. That's the thing about it where I think the light bar, we always get so hung up on it being a VR thing. And then beyond that, maybe beyond it being a, hey, it's telling you what player number you are. But there were games, and there, I shouldn't say there were, there are games that do cool things with it. Like I always appreciate even something like Thief that it would show, you know, if it's bright white, you're visible. If it's darkened, then you're not. Like, right, it was a cool feature for you to hide on. Resident Evil, the way that it's green when you're healthy, you know, yellow when you're in trouble, red when you're about to die or whatever. Those were always cool, but I remember it would have been maybe years, but I feel definitely months where I was finally playing some game in a darkened room, like all lights off. It must have been a horror game. And it was like so, oh my gosh, look at this. Like I see it's like projecting all around the room kind of thing. And I was like, oh, that's really neat. I never, I rarely play games in this dark of an environment for me to see that through my environment, right? So if it is this idea that while I'm playing down here, and I can, you know, even see my hands, my control, just a little bit of light to actually maybe use it in some interesting sense. Okay, I can get behind that. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, where do you want to place it then? Ah, oh, man. This is where it gets really weird, right? Because I feel like, again, I think it's, it's sexier than haptic feedback, but I bet the feedback and triggers are more important to gameplay than this is. So I feel like it I has mean- to go to the bottom of the list. Yeah, I'm I'm split because in terms of importance, honestly, this is probably the least important thing out of the out of, out of, out of these. Mm-hmm. But in terms of what I like the most, like this is the feature out of the three out, out, out of the three we have so far, this is the feature that I like the most. Like I think this oh, is wow. so far the thing that like yeah, when I when I saw the controller, I was like immediately I was like I like that solution way better. Like that seems like a, the the good way to go for that. Okay, I'll compromise with you and put it in number two. I'll play yeah. ball with you. I'll be dead in Let's the do that then. before it takes over. It is number one. Won't Let's do that then. Right, the adjusted on. light bar is number two. So, so far we have haptic feedback and adaptive, tr- adaptive triggers at number three, adjusted light bar at number two, and then two toned design sitting at number one. Greg, let's talk about the create button. This the is where we writes, separate the men from the boys. Oh, yeah. For the buttons, you'll notice there is no longer a share button as we had with the DualShock 4. Don't worry, it's not going away. In fact, we built upon the success of our industry first share button to bring you a new create button feature. With create, we're once again pioneering pioneering new ways for players to create epic gameplay content to share with the world or just to enjoy themselves. We'll have more detail, details on this feature as we get closer to launch. Greg. Yes. They didn't really tell us anything, did they? <laughs> they told us that they they didn't tell us a lot. But they told us enough that I think for somebody who loves the share button as much as I do, that I really, and I know that sounds goofy because it's a goofy thing to say, but it was one of the features for PlayStation 4 I was so excited about was the idea of, you know, from a touch of the button, being able to share to Twitter, uh, being able to stream, right? I think now, you know, we don't, we sit here and we're like, oh man, like everybody Twitch streams, we Twitch stream, you Twitch stream, everybody's, you know, got their own Twitch channel and stuff. For me in particular, the way I got, doing stuff on Twitch was through the PlayStation 4 share button because it was, oh, all I needed was the camera and the headset worked. And yes, I mean, now you go through and you do it that way. And it's such a clunky, weird, not great setup or system. And like, you got the weird keyhole. With like, it's just, it's not great. But when this, when, I mean, when PlayStation 4 launched in 2013, right? Like that was how to Twitch stream for me. Like that was one of the things I was the most excited for. It was a way for me to connect and start my own Twitch channel and stuff. And so I loved that feature. I loved that idea. You know, I, I love to see them take it on uh, uh, and, and try to run with it, right? And sure, Xbox did it. And then of course, Switch now has the exact same stuff and not for live streaming, but for sharing your stuff to Twitter. Actually better because you can post batch screenshots and a bunch of stuff like that. However, for them to sit here and say, all right, cool. The share button's not going away, but we're turning it into create. I think that, especially in the PlayStation ecosystem, create carries weight with it. You know what I mean? Thinking of play, create, share, right? When we talk about Little Big Planet and now we talk about dreams. I do say that, or do think that them saying and calling it create, right? With create, we're once again pioneering new ways for players to create epic gameplay content to share with the world or just enjoy for themselves. 
that does get me interested to see what that actually matters in or means in what they've learned in uh, seven years, right? Since the last mm-hmm. time they did this and what they'd want that system to look like. And hopefully they'll update the goddamn character count on Twitter because that still drives me crazy. But it, to me, Blessing reads like they're going to take the video suite they already have in PlayStation 4, right? In the share factory and hopefully attach that to that button so that I can be with you playing something and I go to save it and rather than either upload the raw clip or trim down clip, I can go in there and put effects on and put text on and make it more Instagram stories, right? Like, I feel like hmm. so much has happened since PlayStation put their mind in making something that was shareable content that it's going to be fascinating to see if they actually double down and do things with this. See, my immediate go-to was the fact that I think create as a term versus share is more relevant. Like in 2013, when you put a share button on the controller, I feel like back then share as a thing you do on the internet was more like, well, it was the term that was more used. Like you go to Facebook and like you share things, right? Like that's yeah, yeah. literally the button that's like next to like, like and comment, right? You share. And I think nowadays with, you see the rise, the, the rise of Twitch or the further rise of Twitch because Twitch is already popular by the time the PS4 came out. Um, you have that, you have like YouTube, you have pretty much everybody being familiar with the idea of content creation and the idea of streaming, of gameplay, of Let's Plays, of all this stuff. You mix that in also w- with the the fact that everybody pretty much has social media, everybody's willing to, or everybody wants to either share short gameplay clips of like a kill streak or a kill in um, Apex or yeah. um, a glitch or whatever it may be, right? Like, I, I think create is just a way more fitting term for all that as opposed to share. Um, and so I like that change, but then also, yeah, with the implications that a create button comes with and with what they've with what PlayStation has learned over the last 70 years, right? Like I whenever I, I have a clip that I want to share on PlayStation, usually what I end up doing is well, one, I have it set so that any any clip I save, say like I, I do like a I don't know man, like a six three three sixty no scope in Call of oh, Duty. Wow. I don't know yeah, if that's still a thing people do. But say oh, I say I say if I pull that off, right? I if I want to share that for me, I have it set so that my playstation saves the last hour of gameplay and the reason why i had that was because when i was first doing ok beast when i first started it up that was the way i was doing let's plays and that was the way i was capturing gameplays by playing for an hour and then going to the share button and then saving that hour-long video clip and then exporting and doing all that stuff and so now like if if i get my 360 no no scope kill i do that i I press the share button i press square to save the video it is now an hour-long video i then go into the gallery uh, yeah. I then press options. I then go into the trim video. I then, out of that hour of footage, I then trim it down to the 10 seconds I want to share on Twitter. And then from there, like, I have to, get, like, uh, I, I can post the tweet and do all that stuff, right? And usually if it's a video, it'll have the, sto- the place you store link at the bottom of it, and that yeah. ruins the whole tweet. Um, well, you're still... That's a lot of steps. Well, that's on you, though. You're putting too many steps in. You could do it the way you want to do it. Well, I guess not if you're playing a multiplayer game, you don't want to write. Because for me, it's always, I'm playing something funny happens, share button, and then it's immediately to post. And then you can post the video that way and trim it there and put it out that way. True. Yeah. yeah. And you, but I'm you with can, you. I'm yeah. with you. Of like what we're talking about right now. I think there's already too many steps. And I think that is, I think the share button's fucking awesome. And I think you can do, and I think honestly, the, what you're talking about, the gallery and the share factory, all the, all the different creates and like putting your own bumpers on there and putting text on there. That all exists already. It's just cumbersome to get to. And it's not yes, as exactly. and slow as fuck. So why would you ever do it? The amount of uh, screenshots and videos I have saved that I wanted to do something with and then totally got distracted and then forgot all about it. That's what I think they want to cut out. They want to get rid of that middleman. And that's where it gets super exciting of with this being create and where we are currently in 2020 with being such a social media share everything society. Like, I do wonder if it's going to be linking to more things so I can post straight to Instagram stories. I wonder if it's going to be a not fully functional, but a pretty decent video suite in there. So it could be that you and me, you do the 360 no scope. We finish the match while we're in the lobby. You pop, you're like, hold on, I'm going off the party. You mute the party, you pop over there, you clip what you want, and then you get to do VO over it, right? Where it's like, Trim it to this, and then, all right, record video. Hey, everybody, it's me, Bless. Here's this cool thing I did, blah, blah, All right, watch PS, I love you. All right, see you guys later. And, you know, do, 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 put it together, put a GIF, put some text on it, and then upload it that way. Like, I, yeah. I think that that's what 
is, and I, I'm totally talking just from what they're saying here, but with Create Mobile, once again, pioneering new ways for players to create epic gameplay content. Like they're talking about content. They're talking about sharing it with the world. They're talking about all the things we talk about. And so I think even, you know, putting the VO over it, I wouldn't put it past them to have it be that you can record a video on top of it as well. Like you can do a let's play with it. You can, you know, that they're sitting there and going. Be able to edit are... gameplay and ga or video and video. Exactly. Like that kind of stuff is awesome. And I think it, when they, you know, we talk about uh, the power of the PlayStation 5 and, and certainly talking about there being no load times and this and like what the processors and hard drives and all that crap are doing. Like, again, that's all tech mumbo jumbo but if it is that they come out and they're like all right cool like you know we have here on stage is dr disrespect and he just did a cool thing and like shows him editing the thing right there right and like maybe you don't obviously he's not in the bathroom or whatever but like it's you know <laughs> it's somebody there to be like this is how easy it is to do this and that becomes a selling point in a really cool way now granted again i know what people are saying if I wanted to make Let's Plays, if I wanted to do this thing, if I'd go and get the Aver kits or the Elgato's and do all this stuff, this is not only entry point stuff, this is marketing stuff. Where it is, if they make it easy and they share it to what you're talking about, Blessing, where it sometimes tags, get it at the PlayStation Store, right? Like, I'm sure the default overlay will say PlayStation 5 or whatever on it. And mm -hmm. you don't care that it's not being used by Ninja to make clips. You just care that a few thousand kids are making clips of their Fortnite stuff and putting it out that way. And yeah, maybe that acts as an introduction to them to get off that platform into something else, but that still benefits PlayStation. Yeah. I, I think making it the most streamlined, like except accessible thing for anybody to, to use um, would be the best, the best thing for them to do with this. And I also think there's a whole conversation we're going to have about like, do you incorporate dreams into this somehow? Like, is there, is there, is there a way you you put uh, dreams in at the system level for people to be able to like use those tools for for I, video? I think so. All that how stuff do you, is put, there how too, do you but... put it through to put it on like the create button? That's what the, you know. I mean, that's where I lose. Yeah, me. you know, granted, that's that's, that's, that's that's definitely where things get difficult. But I wonder if there if there are those conversations going on of like how do we just get how do we get dreams like incorporated into the PS5 at a system level for some of those features to be used by everyone in a way that. Then the complicated thing does get does get to like dreams is dreams is difficult to use compared to like just the the streamline like let's just go from A to B get this thing from your your captured video to Twitter as fast as possible. Yeah, incorporating dreams in, in, into that might be a bit much, but I don't know, man. I think there could be something cool there. Now, real quick, while we're here, and this is a PlayStation podcast, so we're allowed to jump around, and we'll get back to it. Remember what dreams. Up? Oh yeah, remember when we played we it talked in the last about few weeks? No, we. I mean, and like I, this is my. I mean, uh, this isn't the woe is me, you know, heavy is the crown kind of thing. But like, we've been on so many different reviews or whatever that it's been, yeah. go go go, work work work. But I also feel like Dreams launched in February, right? And granted, the world drastically changed in a month, but I also feel like all the conversation about Dreams just died. Like we were all, in, and, I, and I know what you're gonna say if you're listening, you're driving your van full of nuns right now. You're like, well, it was a conversation never really that much, and you know, blah blah. Like, sure, it wasn't setting the world on fire, but it was. I felt like that you were seeing articles about cool creations, you were hearing it on podcasts, we were playing it every week, checking in on, you know, at least every day for me for a while, but checking in, having our ideas, yada yada yada, and then a real re review cycle came through with a bunch of other stuff, and mm -hmm. now it's that question of are people slash us or whoever going to come back to it when when you the listener viewer are done with final fantasy are you going to put dreams back in or are you on to the predator and then on to the next thing and so on and so forth because even with us like and i know we'll talk about what we've been playing but like you know we came off of animal crossing resident evil and uh yeah. final fantasy Doom eternal and, final uh, fantasy yeah, already Doom, like <laughs> jesus right what a what a year it's been for games and maybe that's all that we'll get but mm -hmm. And we came off of those and my first reaction was like, I got to get back to the division. Oh, I got to do the Borderlands DLC. It wasn't, I got to check in on dreams. I got to see what's going on. And I love dreams. I'm I, not taking away from that. Yeah. I've been, th I've been thinking about like, you know, with Final Fantasy 70 being out and us coming off of Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal, I've been thinking a lot about like what game of the year might be. Right. And mm -hmm. I, and mm -hmm. dreams came into my head and I was like, man, I wonder if like what presence, if any dreams might have in those conversations toward the end of the year. Right. Because dreams is such like a, 
a like a big man magnificent thing but at the same time it's so like hard to it's hard it's and we talked about this a lot right it's hard to message it's hard to like wrap your mind your wrap your head around but then like in terms of what we're talking about right now where nobody's really talking about it maybe because there, there's so much other things things happening but even if, even in june right are people gonna be talking about it and like yeah. it, it's tough because there's not really a progression well there's a progression system but there's not really like and for me as somebody who's playing dreams as opposed to creating in dreams jumping around into the into the, into random dreams just playing through just jumping in for like 30 minutes to an hour and having a good time there's not really that that um carrot on the stick to keep me coming back in any shape sure. any way shape or form there's not really really that side of progression there's not really something that's that that has me looking forward to logging in every single day there's no dailies there's yeah, no and i wouldn't yeah. want dailies either but i know i totally I, mean, like, I, totally I don't know what you mean. do and that's you know it's interesting because as we were talking or one of us i brought up in dreams.me right and the and it's going to sound stupid but the page looks entirely different right there's new games in there there's all stuff i haven't heard of which is great and actually makes me enticed to go back and play dreams because when we were talking about it every week and we i was checking in daily for the longest time it was the same stuff up right it was their whatever the activity was for that week or that couple two week period where they were doing stuff that it just looked the same so why would i check in so i wonder if it will and also to your point of like there's not dailies and you're checking on random games it is that thing of like these games need time obviously to be developed into full-blown experiences so of course you're sitting there going well this isn't something that gets the daily drip it gets every few weeks something gets dropped into the game you're talking about or the game you're looking for from your creator so it's yeah a fascinating thing of like how much do you check in and not feel like you're ignoring it or something like that effect right now worth noting just for and i can't i remember when we were talking about this uh and we'd check in on in dreams.me during the show when it first launched i want to say there was like what between like 3,500 and 5,000 yeah. online right right now there's 2277 players online so 2,000 okay so that's like a thousand player like concurrent drops and from well that's like, like you know, I, I, i'm hesitant to right put a number now. on it like that because it, i don't i didn't write it down last time but i i want to remember yeah. that yeah, there's like 35 i want to say last time i checked it was in the 3000s for sure okay okay and again we're also in the middle of a monday so i'm not saying like what's the fuck yeah that's the thing is like it could be dead. Dead. no tomorrow. i'm saying anyways sorry i don't mean to sidetrack the conversation it's just that it, oh, dreams remember when oh yeah two months ago we were so fucking into it <laughs> So for the create button, where do we want to put it in terms of our ranking? Because right now, right, for those listening, we have two-tone design at number one. Number two, the adjusted light bar. And number three, you have haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Where do we want to put the create button? Well, I feel I don't know how you're feeling about it, right? I want to put it at number two. That's what I was thinking also. Look at us right there in sync. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's that thing where I, I wasn't sure where you were going to go with it less so i may I, I split the list and i have an overall in my list that way if it, we started getting into disagreements here it would make more sense mm. but look at that we're pretty See, i'm sitting in a front I'm, I'm in a funny place with the list because i'm still like in terms of the two-tone design that that being number one i'm still in a place of like man I, that's not my favorite thing about this controller but i do understand your argument you understand that is the, the importance most, yeah it's like the most important thing so i feel you i feel what you're saying there let's talk about the built-in mic greg DualSense also adds a built-in microphone array, which will enable players to easily chat with friends without a headset. Ideal for jumping into a quick conversation, but of course, if you're planning to, to chat for a longer period, it's good to have that headset handy. Greg, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this feature. Okay, for it's talking out like, with me. Why do you not know how to feel about this? Because I understand why they would add this from a technological perspective, right? Like mm -hmm. this, this why not right like a controller built in a microphone shit, yeah like shit man who cares I, I think in like in theory it's like okay yeah like if we can do it let's do it you, you know give everybody access to be able to talk to whoever um at at all times right all you need is a controller you don't have to have a headset you're getting rid of that extra stuff um you know if it, it's it seems like a step forward for the technology of it in practice and th this is me coming off a week of playing Call of Duty. <laughs> and uh -huh. I, I just want to put that out there. I've been playing a lot of Call of Duty. I'll talk about it later in, in, in the show. But man, people online are like, I don't, I don't, I don't I'm going to say it. People online are the worst. Like, <laughs> straight up. <laughs> like, I've heard, I've heard so much, like, 
so many slurs, so many sure. toxic things coming sure. off of playing Call of Duty and just leaving. Like, I know I can mute everybody, but it's a thing where I'm just too lazy. I, one, I have to mute people before every match if I want to do that. But then also I can just go into the pl PlayStation party. Um, but part of me is also like, oh, I want to hear what they're saying. I want to hear what they, what they have to say. <laughs> What's this uh, motherfucker going to say now? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's the idea that that a controller automatically built into the mic, right? And maybe maybe they just have it be automatically off. In fact, I think that's what they would have to do for like privacy. Say. Yeah, privacy control. You have to opt in. You don't have to do a bunch of stuff for it. Yeah. But the idea of like, what if just a, bu a bunch of people just leave that thing on and you just hear a bunch of background noise. You oh, hear, I've heard, a, I've heard a lot of mothers yelling at kids over the last week, you know, just yeah. from the other room being like, Thomas, and like, all this, all this stuff. I, that's the thing that I, that I don't love about this feature. That said, like, I, I think it's a cool idea. Like I, I th them in the Again, here you are the, trying to sell yourself on an idea. <laughs> yeah, them them in the PS blog also saying that like, hey, it's quick. It's good for a quick conversation, but if you want to have like a full conversation, of course, like get a mic. Doesn't also like give me much faith in this feature. Well, it's clearly that's, them that's saying odd. like they're building this in. Like, it's so. I understand everything you're saying. I will still say that this is in the running for my most important feature on the thing. Really? Because it just it just democratizes everything. And I know you can make the argument, well, the fucking PlayStation 4 shipped with a microphone, you know, headset thing built in, right? Just the one earpiece or whatever. So mm -hmm. what about that? And it was like, well, yeah, but that was so easy to lose, so easy to break, so easy. It wasn't great quality, obviously. It was just shoved into a drawer and forgotten about for the most part, right? This does make it easier and democratizes it to the point that, yes, you're, if you're going to play, you know, stupid games, you're going to get stupid prizes, blessings. So if you want to go play Call of Duty and then stay, instead of Division with me, then sure, Fair. that's the kind of quality gamer you're going to get. But for me, as somebody who rarely likes being on headset, right? Even with our friends, right? As somebody who hates talking on the phone, even when I'm playing mm -hmm. with other people, like, it, it like Kevin and I have a great rapport when we play online. It's not like we have to constantly entertain each other or talk or whatever. And so that's great. But like even this weekend, uh, I was playing division as I do. Cause I'm a, I'm an awesome person. And, uh, I put on the, in the kind of funny clan. I'm like, Hey, just so everybody knows, like you're free to join me. If you see me online anytime, like I leave it open for friends and clan members. Never, if you just want to run stuff with me, and I, but I put in there, I'm like, I'm rarely ever on headset. And so like, sure enough. once I put that out there, people started jumping in and playing games with me and it was great. But it was that thing of and they, they weren't trying to talk to me or anything like that. If I had it built in and it was that thing, it'd be so nice to be able to hit it and be like, hey, thanks for the game. Or, hey, wait over here. Or like, wait, what are you mm -hmm. doing? Can I help you? Like, I don't want to get into having a full-blown conversation, but I don't mind uh, chiming in real quick with like, oh, this is going on or that's going on, right? Like, I feel multiplayer games in particular, like there's that push and pull of wanting to interact and be present in the game but if it's not a raid or it's not me catching up with a friend or whatever i'd rather be talking to jen about some bullshit and shooting stuff together and mm -hmm. i feel like if you if there's an easy way to lay that out that's great removing that my 37 year old man problems from it it's also just awesome i think for hey the kids who want to st talk and be stupid usually are going to go play fortnite or minecraft or whatever together yeah they're going to get in call of duty as well but there's going to be that thing where so many people are going to use that just to hang out with each other and just to have that ability to chime in. I wonder too, you know, with PlayStation five's uh, focus on audio and the fact that they're talking about taking it seriously and the Mark Cerny wanting you to DM photos at your ear. Like if there's going to be, if this is actually, even though they're going to, they're saying like, Hey, this isn't the best quality. If there's going to be noise canceling on it, right. If it's going to be that I don't have to worry about bleed through the TV into the microphone, into the world. And then yeah, to your point of like, turning it on, turning it off and what those things are going to be and locking people out and meeting people in games. Like there's a million different ways to, I think not safeguard, but make it how you want it to be, whether it is you're just muting everybody and not having to worry about it, whether it is that, you know, it is open channel on certain things or whatever. I think it's just a cool way of giving, taking a, away one of those barriers to entry, right? It reminds me of the create button we're talking about where just simplifying the process makes it so much easier and then more people will use it. And then, the hope, of course, is that if more people are using it, they're going to understand that, oh, this is cool, and I do like this, and I should get a better headset, and I should figure this out, and I should, you know, make for a better thing, better world of online players. Better world of online players. Which won't happen. I can dig it. Yeah, I think I, for, for me, me specifically, I, I appreciate that 
that extra barrier for all for all the reasons I said before. But I feel I feel yeah. what you're saying in terms of like the de- de- democratization of of uh, the microphones. Of course. So that begs the question of where do we want to put it on this ranking? You said it's your it's your favorite so far. No, no, I said I I could see it in the running for number gotcha. one. Gotcha. Gotcha. Then I look at these gotcha. buttons and I'm like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. See, yeah, I think it's either two or three, and I think. The, the two becomes the fact. Well, I mean, no, it's three. I think creates I can, I more important. Because I'm between three and four. Okay. And so it sounds like it's three. Okay. It's three, everybody. The you, you get excited. In microphone. <laughs> lastly, Greg. The, is, let me check if this is last. Yeah, yeah. Lastly, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> lastly, you know what? Hold on one second. God damn. Yeah, hold on. I got to check real quick. <clears throat> the USB C port and rechargeable battery. Uh, the PS blog says we also took thoughtful consideration to ways to maintain a strong battery life for dual senses rechargeable battery. And then in the image of the controller, we can clearly see the, that it has a USB C port. Greg, this isn't, I mean, the USB C port is new. The rechargeable, bat- rechargeable battery is not new, but the idea that they are, they're looking into ways to maintain a strong battery life for DualSense, good news, because the DualShock 4 didn't have the greatest battery. Yeah, 100%. And also, I mean, that's awesome. I'm, I hope that it actually has it. My, my, my hope, right, is that redoing the light bar the way they have and putting it behind the touchpad, I feel like you can have a smaller light bulb, but get as bright if not brighter uh, of, of uh, a light bleed out of the sides by positioning it properly and like using a, you know not reflective services but like basically you know how you put a candle and you put your hand around the candle how much brighter that burns right or how much brighter it looks i'm hoping that that means that they'll be getting will be getting a better battery life out of it all that yeah. removed just the fact that it's USB C is awesome oh yeah that's great as you know someone who is very stupid as you all know but enjoys video games like uh, once everything started moving to USB C, and and Tim gave me the crash course of like why USB C is better, on top of the fact that it's easier to plug in anyway, you know, to sit there and constantly rotate the damn thing, just that it's so much faster that it's able to, ch- it'll be able to charge controllers faster. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, the biggest thing. Yeah, that's awesome. It. Yeah, and exactly. like and, and and in terms of of like you know the simple things like being able to plug in and faster, there's also the fact that like there's so many other things that have come forward to USB C. Like my phone has a USB C charger, totally. my switch has a USB C, and so the idea that I can like switch around cords for that also sounds great to me. Yeah, where yeah, where do you want to rank that then? Um, again, these are the this is the USB port plus the rechargeable battery, right? Which the rechargeable battery, no brainer, right? PlayStation's been on that for so long, for sure. Mm. So we're ranking, ranking the features. Because right now, as we have it, it's number one, the two-tone design. Number two, the create button. Number three, the built-in mic. Number four, the adjusted light bar. And then number five, haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. I mean, it's a big deal that it's USB-C, but also it's like, that's what it should be, right? Yes. Like, that's what I think we all knew or hoped. Like, if it, it if it wasn't USB-C, we'd have problems. Yeah, exactly. For sure. So while important, I don't think it's nearly as important as anything. It, it would not. I don't think it's nearly as important as the top three. So I put it beneath built-in mic. So I go two tone design, beneath, create built. I'm sorry, what? Or actually, you know what? I can see what you're saying there. I was gonna say I put it beneath uh, adjusted light bar, but I think the USB C port, in terms of importance, is probably more important. Like t- in terms of technically, like it's probably more important technically than the adjusted light bar. And that's my thing is I think you said it yourself, right? If it wasn't USB C, we'd have a problem. In For the same sure. way, like if they, if the light bar hadn't been adjusted, we would have never. If, if they would have released it and it still had the thing over there, we'd have been like, "Oh, they're like we made it less powerful or whatever." So it doesn't eat your battery, whatever. Who cares if they adjust the light bar? We have to see that and see what it's all about. Everybody, we have our rankings. And number one for the PS5 Dual Sense controller features is the two tone design. Number two, the Cray button. Number three, the built in mic. Number four, the USB C port and rechargeable battery. And number five, the adjusted light bar and at number six, the haptic feedback and adaptive triggers. Greg, we have some we have some questions here about the dual sense controller. Do you want I'll to touch on what, those? 
we didn't even promote the fact that we are going to lead with this and do this whole ranking and really get into the really, really nerdy PlayStation shit of the dual sense. And oh, still, yeah. you you listeners are so fucking PlayStation nerdy. You all knew we would and wrote in with so many dual sense questions. So I want to start with Anakin JMT, who wrote in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games. Sorry, Kevin. I heard I distorted there. My apologies. Uh, after the dual sense was revealed, both Greg and IGN's Ryan McCaffrey put up Twitter polls asking if people preferred offset sticks or in line both poll both polls showed a preference for offset although greg's was closer than ryan's do you think sony might introduce a version of the dual sense with offset sticks it seems to be the preference for first person shooters and a few other genres but i think it would be a nice option for people like myself who enjoy playing playstation games but who would rather have the six sticks offset for our comfort so yes if you missed this uh, last week after all this happened, Ryan McCaffrey put up a poll that was basically, I know my following is mostly Xbox, but I have to ask, uh, do you prefer offset sticks or uh, inline sticks? And then he responded to his own tweet. He, he goes, I also know, or maybe this, no, he, he's like, I also know that if at Game Over Greg, you put up this poll, it'd be a completely different uh, uh, results. And I thought that was so fascinating that I copied Ryan's exact tweet, went to my page, changed it to be, I know my following is mostly PlayStation, but put it up and then send it to Ryan and sure as shit. Yeah. Even though it was by a wide margin on Ryan's, at least last I checked uh, offset one on mine as well, offset one. And so blessing, the question is, yeah. Do you think Sony might introduce a version of the dual sense with offset sticks? No, like I, I, I'm in the, cause I know there are offset versions of the PS4 controller, but those are all third party, right? Yeah. They're licensed. So, I mean, they're PlayStation they're, approved or whatever, but yeah approved but they're they're third-party controllers yeah, i think that's probably the best we'll get Sorry? yeah I, I think i think that's the best we'll get as far as the ps5 dual sense controller like i think we, we can get i think we'll probably get those same things not even probably yeah. i think we will get those same things right the third-party offset stick controllers like the scuff controllers is that what they're called the scuff ones yeah you got the scuff um, one there's that astro one where you can swap it in swap it out yeah 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 i think we'll we'll see those but in terms of a version of the dual sense directly from from sony i think they I, I think they just they've just stuck by their guns like i i don't think i don't think they see it worth it to really make one on their own when they can have it be so that everybody's just on the same page this is what this is what we believe in this is what we're going by this is how like when you have I, when you have the image of the controller pop up in a game you don't have to like switch it over it it is um in line the the yeah. dual the dual sticks are in line i think that's that's just their vision for it that's just how they they believe in it to be i think you are 100 percent correct i think that this is for this generation i would have said so beforehand obviously but coming into playstation 5 this is a hill they will die on i think that when probably when they said i'm sure they looked at versions of the dual sense or whatever they, when they're prototyping what the playstation 5 controller would be that had offset sticks but i think that Time and time again, they probably came back to the fact that even though this is meant to be a revolution, this is meant to be this thing, they still want it to feel uniquely PlayStation. And depending on your perspective, for better or worse, sticks the two inline sticks is PlayStation. And if they were to move them, it would 100% be seen as a we sign miss. of Xbox, <laughs> right? That PlayStation yeah. finally gave it up. And I think that even though there is this argument that there is this preference for so many people it hasn't affected playstation right like if if playstation hadn't run away with this last generation of playstation 4 if there was a financial impact or ramification if the scuff controllers or astro controllers that are swappable were outselling the dual shock for you know five to one or whatever maybe there'd be some reason for it. but in the long thing the grand scheme of the things i think here mainly this always comes back to Oh, I prefer it that way, but I play this way too. You know what I mean? Because it's that interesting thing of, I know that I, you know my career has been defined by PlayStation for 13 years now, but I literally don't care. Like I'm, Brian Altano responded to McCaffrey's tweet and was very much like, I use the Xbox, I use the PlayStation, I use the Pro, and I'm fine every time. And I've, and granted, I am very much anchored in the PlayStation ecosystem. That is the controller that feels natural and the one I use the most, but when I hop over to my pro controller and play a lot of animal crossing, I'm not being like, Oh man, this is weird. Or, Oh, this is so much better. Like I just don't feel it either one way or the other. And granted, I'm not a competitive first person shooter. I'm not, you know, there's a million different use cases. I'm sure people are getting out of it, but I would think that even with our Twitter polls, 
most people are like me. Where it's like, all right, cool. This is what it is. This is yeah. what PlayStation controller is. This is what an Xbox controller is. And I'm not on either side of it going, man, I wish I had the other one. I think that's the thing is that I don't think the the passion is there. Like, this is not like a passionate argument of people being like, offset is better or inline is better. Usually it is like a preference thing, right? Yeah. And I honestly, I think if if PlayStation came out and they revealed the, the dual sense and it was offset sticks, then you'd have a revolution. Then you'd have people yelling in the streets being like, how dare you change it? Uh, and I think that's just that that's the thing that comes with like, with change, like change is hard, change is difficult. Um, and they, they, at this point they've proven that or not, they've proven, but there, there's not really been a reason for them to change it. Like aside from, yeah, it seems like most people have that preference of, of offset that being the case. I don't think it's a thing that people are hammering, hammering down the door for. Yeah. And I think, you know, you raised it earlier of you understand when you look at it and not wanting to have, when you turn it on two different controllers in it, like what, what the two different controller layouts would be as small as that thing that seems, I think it's the same way that even though the dual sense when we look at it is so different than DualShock 4, DualShock 3, DualShock 2, DualShock, it still is the DualShock, right? It's it's clearly the evolution of that controller and I think they want that still. They want that brand identity. They want it to look different so we're all like, "Oh my god, what is this thing? I can't wait to hold it and make up my own opinion." But they also want anybody who knows anything to glance at it and be like, "Oh, it's a PlayStation controller," right? Like I get that. Not yeah. to have it become this ambiguous, oh, wait, is it, am I, which one am I using? Which one am I talking to? Like, I don't know. I don't buy it. Yeah. So I think they're, we're, we're going to have inline sticks for the foreseeable future. The foreseeable future, for sure. Bless. Yes. We talked about this one similarly on Kind of Funny Games Daily when the dual, dual sense got revealed. But I want to bring it here and have a conversation, especially based on everything we just talked about. Uh, Sergano Bo, Bozart. <laughs> AKA Brother Grim Bobo writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, Hey, Greg and Bless, the dual sense looks awesome, but something that keeps bugging me is their inclusion of a microphone within the controller. What is the intention here? Is Sony about to use the data collected from these mics to sell our info? I feel like this is a similar issue that was raised with the Xbox One slash Kinect, but now that we have hindsight and reports of Kinect surveillance issues, how will Sony sell this without scaring its uh, player base? Hope you all are staying sane, safe, and sexy. Keep playing, brother Grim Bobo. So we've talked a lot about the microphone here, right? Yeah, we we've have. Had, we've had a great discussion about it. It's right there at number three important, uh, number three overall important features of the Dual Sense, right? Do you have privacy concerns with it? Uh, that's a that's a that's a um, a loaded, uh, question. loaded question, Greg. <laughs> because I have. I yeah I, yes I have privacy issues with like everything that I own that has a mic on it. That said, like I don't the dual sense specifically. I don't I don't think it's anything different from like the connect or my phone. Like I I I like I think we've come such a far away in terms of how we how we talk about the devices we have in our homes, right? Like our Alexas and I don't mean to activate anybody's devices because I know me saying it on a podcast is going to then activate it, activate your devices. So I apologize, but Alexa, I, I, order toilet paper. <laughs> got him. I don't got do him. Don't, you know, <laughs> got him. <laughs> Greg Miller doesn't give a fuck. I, in, in terms of the devices that we have in our homes that have microphones in them, I think we've come a long way in the last like decade and I don't think it matters as much. I think people are just willing to accept that like this is the way things are now, right? You have microphones yeah. everywhere and whether or not they're listening, like like who knows? Like, of course, like we care, but apparently we don't care enough to like not buy them because they make our lives easier. And so it's well, like that's the biggest I, thing is like. It, I think so many people jump to the conclusion of, and granted, don't get me wrong, I'm I'm saying all this shit, and then it'll be revealed that exactly what it was that jump to the conclusion of, well, Connect or uh, uh, Echo or Alexa is you know recording everything you say and yada yada yada. And I remember when uh, we got uh, Alexa and installed her, and then you know I read something on Reddit, which was this guy breaking it down of like. Listen, it's impossible. Like somebody was freaking out about it, listening to everything. He's like, it's impossible because the keyword triggers this, which records back and so on. It's like, it's so it's such a minuscule amount of data it can actually get that even uh, I'm sorry, Brother Grim Bobo's article he sources here is the old Vice one, if you remember this from Joseph Cox, August 21st, 2019. Microsoft contractors listened to Xbox owners in their homes, right? Which sounded so drastic, but then like this is the uh, what I remember from the report as I read it, right? 
the former contractor said most of the voices they heard were children. The Xbox stuff was actually a bit of a welcome respite, honestly. It was frequently the same game, same DLC, same types of commands. Xbox, give me all the games for free, or Xbox, download newest Minecraft skin packs, or whatever. Uh, they added the former, blah, blah, blah. Occasionally, we heard X Xbox tell Solus to heal, or something similar, and we command a Dragon Age Inquisition, right? Uh, and that listening continued as Xbox moved from using connected voice commands to Cortana, provide a document that describes about... Uh, domain for controlling game features such as uh, finding friends lists creating a party inviting players to a party most experts like it sounds like at a headline that is listening to your entire thing and recording this whole thing it very much like the guy I was talking about with echo right is talking is listening when you say the keyword so it's like i'm not worried about that that's not my you know i mean the concern is that somebody flips a switch and listens to you all the time and then leaks personal data or films you getting busy on the couch you yeah. saying, oh, fuck you, Xbox. I don't care if you record. <laughs> Go ahead and listen to that human contractor at Xbox HQ. And so for me with the PlayStation DualSense microphone being built in, I think that its main purpose is to get everyone talking to each other in games so that you enjoy your multiplayer games more, so that you spend more money, whether it be buying a new headset or using multiplayer in-game currency, right? They're a business. That's how it works out. That's where it goes. I do think that this... Um, Lends credence slash for, makes me believe way more in that AI patent that got uh, filed what a few months ago that we talked about on the shows. That was mm -hmm. the idea of going, hey, PlayStation, how do I beat this boss? Like you die a million times or hey, PlayStation, how do I get past this part? And it goes 95% of people did this or you can buy this DLC and people were you know, worried about the microtransaction part of it. It definitely the microphone being built in that way suddenly does get me percolating and moving on the idea that there will be a PlayStation, uh, Amazon, uh, Alexa, whatever you want to call it. There'll be an AI in it that is like, hey, PlayStation, like, hey, PlayStation, you know, start this. Hey, PlayStation, set a timer. Hey, PlayStation, turn on Spotify. Like, it's interesting that, and then granted, I know right now, I know somebody, probably nanobiologist, is firing up your wrong, hoping I look at to say, there already is voice commands. I know there's already voice commands in playstation i understand that right now it happens when i have my playstation i hooked up and it will be like safe, Dude, safe. I've, I've never activated that thing purposely Fuck it's no. like whenever i just don't <laughs> care about it that's when it decides to pop up and i'm like i don't have a microphone connected how is this thing hearing me and that's my thing is that i think again they've been moving towards this kind of stuff and i think that it's not that we were ignoring it it's just that it wasn't easy none of this shit is if there's i always talk about like how simple it should be to get somebody who likes me on Twitter to click a link. It is so incredibly fucking hard to get somebody to click a link for a podcast, a t-shirt, something free, a podcast, a YouTube video, right? To, for PlayStation to go in and put all this R&D into, hey, here's how we're going to you know, let you edit video on your PlayStation 4. Here's how we're going to let you talk to your PlayStation 4. Here's, and like, nobody fucking uses it because it is, what the hell's happening? I don't want this, blah, 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 blah. To suddenly make it that, you know, there is the button on the PlayStation uh, DualSense, right, that is labeled for mute. Is it also going to be that I can double, uh, if it's unmuted, I can double punch the PlayStation button and immediately get connected to the AI to say, hey, start this thing or hey, pause the movie. Because fuck, I'll tell you what, watching Back to the Future Blu-rays on my uh, PS4 where I only watch digital stuff on my PlayStation 4, I cannot fucking get over that it's 2020 and the goddamn buttons are still so fucking backwards to watch a movie. Where I'm hitting fucking triangle, trying, I'm getting pop up menus. I'm doing what I'm like, oh. just pause the fucking movie. I hit X. That's what it should be. No, it's circle here. All right. Well, great PlayStation. Thank <laughs> you, you fuckers. <laughs> I'm saying that I don't yeah. think the, I think the microphone is not built in for surveillance, but built in for probably for sure making money. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. And I, I'm 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 with you. I'm also of the mind that like all all the microphones that are in our houses already, right. like it's I I understand anybody who is like. The, this all this doesn't seem right we're living in a totalitarian feature like they're all watching us i just i understand that fear too but i don't think there's any reason to be more skeptical of your ps4 controller than you are of your phone or anything else yeah no 100 percent. and that's the thing is if you already have siri you already have Alexa, you already have google you have all these different things like playstation come on they yeah can barely get their shit together to buy a game you think they're out there they listening? keep you out of war you think they care about what you're doing in the now, private see, that'd be the thing. if i could be promised that cory barlog's the one listening to my messages i i, oh. I applaud him I, I will say i do really like the idea of and this is where the built-in microphone comes into place right i like the idea of double tapping the play the playstation button and then having it be commands that does sound cool to me and i hope they do something along the lines of that yeah 
Uh, final one here on the dual sense I want to get in is Rocket Guardian because we've had a lovely conversation about this. Bless. Uh, wrote into kind of funny.com slash Patreon. It says, I loved the design of the new controller. However, I'm not so hot on the color scheme. If you had the chance to design and color a controller, what would your ideal design for the dual sense be? Hmm. I mean, yeah, we've had, think. there have been so many mock ups that people have done within the last week yeah. that I think like plenty of them look incredible. And that's my thing is I really like the shape of the dual sense like that. And I think that's the thing that's been vibing with me. The more, the more I see it, like every time I look at the picture, I like, I like the shape of it more and more. It's yeah. the colors of it that kind of like throw me off and really like if they did it all black, boom, I'd love it. If they do it like, you know, I, I, I think any other probably combination of colors could probably do it for me. And so I would keep the shape of it. I would keep that. Uh, I would keep the, where the light bar is, all that stuff. And maybe like, I don't know. Maybe I'll take the where the black color is. I think I might move that. Hmm. See, and this mm. is what I'm not a visual designer, so I, this might look ugly. But I would move that below the thumbsticks and have oh, the wow, accents okay. be like, yeah, like have I'll have the accent be right below the, the thumbsticks. So it's doing the same thing where it is like the black, um, and but it's just like a bit less of it because right now it's just the the ratio of it feels kind of off to me in terms of the the black to white ratio. See, I. I I I I have come around and I like the stop, the actual visual of it. I like the colors, like right that. I think when we first saw it and it was so different, it was this uh, you know dual color scheme or whatever. I was like, I don't really know what we're getting into. The more I, and now that it's just normal and that's what it is, I like it. But I am excited to see just the same setup of the dual tone, but different colors of it. And I hope and pray that there's a fucking PlayStation design lab for this because it's oh honestly, yeah, Xbox that would be hot. so many. Xbox has done so many amazing gamers first thing. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but I would just, I hope they go ham with this. If they don't give me the option to go in there and make my own controllers and my own colors, then please just put out a bunch of different colors. Cause like this with the hot paint, like doing like the kind of funny pink and blue, right? The neon blue, the neon pink or whatever. I think if the, the white portion was all pink and then the blue was blue. Fuck. Yeah. All black. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, for Mizzou black and gold. Like, you know, we've had so many different, custom controller uh things pop up whether it's like controller chaos or toasty stickers and doing decals and stuff like the create the creative nature of those things and like what you're talking about all the mock-ups we've seen like i would love to get the ability to actually make these from playstation just with primary colors right matte finishes shiny finishes all these different things like that'd be so fucking cool yeah also i'm i'm i miss the the color and the buttons i think i mentioned that before in the show but I, I i i like the playstation buttons colors yeah. Um. And so, like, if they release a, a version of a controller with that, then I'm down for that too. But uh, real gamers never needed it. You know what I mean? Real, real yeah. But add, it added such a personality. Yeah. See, no, like, no. Trust me, yeah. my PlayStation Vita here has enough personality, and the bu buttons aren't colored. Don't worry about it. Yeah, but right. but like you still, I don't know, the white with the black and white and the futuristic thing. They went full futuristic and just took out the colors, and it's like you can do both. You can be both. Why not both? No, I can't no, because it would look ugly. Wait, we don't uh, need it. Miller, were you anticipating that? statement so you had the vita you'd pulled it out of whatever storage closet you had no he just has a vita like in, in his house no I literally know. He, 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 I mean, he can reach anywhere and pull a vita dust right what i'll have you know i'm right there on my rush rover trophies that i'll be talking about soon enough on my 104 okay. psn games ranked all right don't you worry about my playstation vita how if it's charged or not because it's here and it's getting played son whoa you insult me Kevin, thinking i had to blow dust off my vita you insult me sir and my good name and I won't have it. Blessing. Greg. It's time to tell you about our sponsor. Uh, today we're brought to you by kindoffunny.com slash Mizzou. Hey, it's not a real sponsor. Uh, it's me, Greg Miller. And if you didn't know, because you haven't seen me on Twitter and this all happened really quickly, uh, the American Cancer Society reached out to me and said, hey, we are doing a college streaming tournament. Would you like to represent Mizzou? And I said, you bet your ass I would. So I'm out there representing the University of Missouri, my alma mater. Uh, basically, it's like extra life if it was a March Madness bracket. So you can go to kindoffunny.com slash Mizzou. You donate money to the American Cancer Cancer Society through the links right there. And then guess what? Uh, I get money and I'm representing Mizzou. And then hopefully I beat Florida because Florida is uh, Mizzou's opponent. And then we move on to the next bracket and the next bracket and the next bracket. If we win the championship, I get a trophy for Mizzou. 
I don't need to tell you people that I love Mizzou very much and that I desperately would love to have them have to have a trophy on campus that they need to display for me. So I need you to go to kindoffunny.com slash Mizzou, support the American Cancer Society. Of course, a a fantastic uh, 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 charity that does a whole bunch of different services, right? Obviously, they have, they, you know, they they have a whole bunch of information. When I got sick with cancer, one of the first websites I went to was the American Cancer Society. Uh, But beyond that, of course, beyond, they have Hope Lodges where if you're getting treatment, you can stay at. They, uh, you know, will drive people to their cancer appointments or chemo appointments like the american cancer society is great this is a great thing so even if you don't want to support mizzou and crush my dreams for some reason you can go find your own alma mater there uh you won't find can uh can you will not find kansas there however kansas of course is doing a completely different charity where they're actually trying to support cancer taking over university of kansas is trying to have cancer like proliferate and it's really fucked up blessing and i just don't all right so i looked down at my phone and i i came back at the cancer anyways ladies and gentlemen part, the next thing i was like what did i miss <laughs> i'm streaming the division two raid with the kind of funny clan you can watch that wednesday at 2 p.m <laughs> twitch.tv slash kind of funny games fran mirabella will be there uh kind of funny.com slash mizzou to donate division raid wednesday 2 p.m pacific on twitch.tv slash kind of funny games uh kansas is trying to give everybody cancer uh blessing time for our next segment what you've been playing what have you been playing bless I've been playing a lot of that Call of Duty. It, it, and it's one of those this things is where... This the war zone, as the kids say? No. I've been playing just Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Just Team Deathmatch, Greg. What? I don't know. I don't I don't know what happened. It, and I, I think... This is what I think it is. I've been playing a lot of Rainbow Six Siege, as I mentioned, as mentioned in does. previous episodes, as one does. I've been playing a lot of uh, uh, Battle Royales over the last few years, right? Ever since uh, PUBG came out, I've been on the Battle Royale train. Even though it was Fortnite that really brought me in, and then Apex that like made me a believer, believer. Sure. And sure. so, I've not really had, I don't think, like a traditional like team deathmatch Call of Duty ish experience huh. in a while. Okay. Um, because like I always play a lot of Overwatch, which is like a different type of game, right? That's like objective based, which I know there's objective based uh, modes in Call of Duty, but Overwatch is like a different thing. It's a hero shooter. Uh, yeah. Rainbow Six Siege is more of like a tactical round based thing, where it is like. It's the last person to survive, but also you're you're trying to save a hostage or deactivate a bomb, all this stuff. I think in my process of playing Rainbow Six Siege, I I think it was legit in, in the middle of playing like a, a round. I was like, man, it'd be nice if I was getting way more kills in the game, like because it's so satisfying <laughs> when you get a kill. Yeah. Um, and in my mind, I was like, well, Call of Duty exists if I just want to like go around and, and just shoot people and get those kills. And okay. so I started playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And I started off playing Gun Game. Greg, are you familiar with, with Gun Game? No. So Gun Game is a fun mode uh, that I used to play all the time with friends back in the day. It's basically first to 18 kills wins. It's a free-for-all match. Um, and the twist is everybody starts off with the same gun. Everybody starts off with a pistol. But then after you get a kill, you then move up, move up a gun. You oh. move on to like it's probably like a submachine gun or a shotgun. Then if you get another kill, you move to a different gun. It's a randomized ladder of guns that you're making your way through okay. until you get to the end. And so it's basically it's basically like you have to be, you have to be, be a master of everything if you want to win this match. And it's a lot of fun. I've been enjoying it. It's been a good blast from the past to be playing that mode. It's really fun in modern warfare, which like. I, I haven't really jumped into Modern Warfare. Hey, can you hear that me? Much. I can... You guys are all like super frozen and robotic sounding. Uh, do you... So oh, I'm going to leave the call good. and try reconnect. Uh, I think they did it too. Sorry, guys. You know how crazy this all is. How do I sound now? Well, I mean, you said it weird, right? Uh, how do I sound now? <laughs> there you go. You sound great. <laughs> how do I sound? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. You good now? Yeah, you guys sound good now. Everyone's I'm just saying, sweet. as always, Kevin, I look great on my end. I also look great on my Also, Greg looks great on my end. Yeah, no, you looked really good for when it started, Bless, and then you went kind of woogity woogity. Oh, well, you look very HD. I well, still look great, actually, though. no. No, now you're deteriorating. Maybe I'm going to stop oh, no. sharing my stream, my screen. Maybe okay. that's affecting okay. it. I don't know. That. It's a time of okay. experimenting, you know what I mean, guys? Bless, it, it, oh, yeah. Are you down to experiment, Bless? Let's experiment. I'm, I'm, always, I'm always down to experiment. All right, good. Uh, Kevin, are we, are, can I keep going about Call of Duty? 
No, you have to move on to something else. <laughs> right. We think that might be what sucked it down. That's what my just... Yeah, no, go for it. So as I was saying, right, gun games, it's a game where, like, you move up a ladder of guns, and with each kill, you get a new gun. Uh, and you're trying to basically get to 18 kills before anybody else in the free-for-all match. It's, like, probably, like, 20 people playing or something like that. Uh, really fun. It's been a great blast from the, from the past. Uh, I've been really, really enjoying it. And this has been really, like, my first experience uh, with this new Call of Duty Modern Warfare game. Well, I call it new, but it came out in November or October, whenever Call of Duty has come out. Um, yeah. But this this has been my first experience playing this Call of Duty game. Um, and it's been my first experience playing a Call of Duty game probably since Black Ops 4. Or no, Black Ops 3. And so it's been like probably like four, four or five years since I've really like d- uh, dug a Call of Duty. And so I've been playing a lot of, a lot of that. I've also been playing a, a mode called Gunfight, which is really fun. It's 2v2. It's this one round by round. Okay, you've played this one. I this love one I it. fucking love. Yeah, this one's great. Yeah. And so like for those who are unfamiliar with Gunfight, right? It's a modern warfare mode uh, for the new game. And yes, 2v2, you're in a small arena and they basically uh, drop you in. It's randomized guns, but everybody gets the same gun per round. And so you're basically trying to take out the other team uh, uh, before they take you out. Uh, really fun. Been, been enjoying that a lot. And then I'm also playing some team deathmatch. Overall, like... I was, I've, I, it's one of those things where I forgot how good Call of Duty can be. Like I mentioned earlier in the episode that, you know, there've been, there've been people online that have been like, you know, being, being the stereotypical, like saying all the slurs, insulting people, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Right. And it's been a while since I've gotten that experience in a game. Like I put, pl- I played a lot of Call of Duty in like high school and college. And I also play a lot of GTA online. And so I figured that like, I figured that I'd I'd already experienced the worst of it, but somehow <laughs> like, the internet has changed. It won't be like that anymore. Yeah, for some reason I was like, oh yeah, like because you have that in GTA Online, but for some reason in Call of Duty, it's just worse. It's just like all over the place, and I think it's because I'm playing like free for all games. Maybe that's what it is. But you know, overall, I've been I've been, I've been enjoying myself. I think I'm gonna keep playing it for now. It's been a good uh, it's been a good quarantine game for sure because yeah. it's one of those things where I just turn my mind off and I just go, and it's been just fun to play. And so aside from that, uh, I've also been playing The Messenger, if you're, oh, wow. if you're unfamiliar. Okay. Yeah, like uh, The Messenger, of course, Sabotage Studio game came out in late 2018, I want to say. Uh, Ninja, Gaiden-ish, Ninja Gaiden-ish game. Um, basically, it's a, it's a 2D side-scroller action game. Uh, the hook of it is being that you can, like, trans- you can time travel. Like, the whole game kind of deals with time. But you're time traveling from the past to the future. And when you time travel, the graphics also like tra- time travel with you. And so you switch between 8-bit and 16-bit graphics. Um, really fun game. Greg, did you ever play The Messenger? No, I, know I, you're, I know Portillo's in it, right? Is he in that one? Isn't, he, isn't there like a, a DLC? No, you're thinking of Guacamelee too. I'm thinking of Guacamelee, you're right. Yeah, yeah, but you're right that uh, if full disclosure, Bob Agenda represented the messenger when it came out. Um, no, I never did. I it, it was one of those I started, and I don't have that affinity for Ninja Gaiden NES or whatever. So like, it wasn't like I didn't have that nostalgia to go back to it or whatever. And so I played it for like a little bit on a flight for a couple hours, and it's like totally get why people dig it, not my thing. And I think Tim had already mm-hmm. beaten at that point, and he was like, when it gets to the twist it still wasn't i wish it got there faster i i forget what its exact review was on it and it was yeah. just like i'm glad people enjoy this i'm good that's my thing too is that there is like a twist and it's a twist that is like it's not really a twist because they put it in the trailers like the fact that you're time traveling but then yeah. also like even making my way up to the twist it was one of those things where i was like well i know this game isn't done yet because i'm only three hours in and then also <laughs> there's a shopkeeper that you talk to all the time and the shopkeeper alludes yeah. to it and you're like i know what's going on here um but that said like i'm i'm enjoying myself with it uh the the writing is surprisingly good i didn't i didn't hear people talk much about the writing of the game when it came out but i found that uh, i've been really enjoying how well written it is like there's a shopkeeper character that you you talk to all the time because at at like half of the checkpoints you can essentially go into the shop and then do your upgrades do all that stuff but then there's a chat option and the, sh- the shopkeeper will tell you stories. He'll like tell you about the area you're in. You'll tell you he'll tell you about the boss and all that stuff. And he's where you get pretty much all of the lore from in the game. And he's really well wi- well written. He's really funny. Um, has like really good quotes. I've really been enjoying that aspect of the game. Um, the one thing I will say is that I've not really been loving the boss battles. There's like quite a few of them. I feel like every other level you'll get a boss battle, and it's that thing where 
with boss battles, I think if you're if you're gonna do a thing where you have multiple phases, usually switching up the the attacks that the boss does, or like having some some kind of fresh approach for the boss, like kind of keeps things keeps things going, keeps things fresh, and keeps things interesting. But the ways in which they have progressive phases for bosses in the messenger is that they just speed them up and make them go faster, um, okay. which I don't find as satisfying. It help it. It's good for ramping things up and making it making you feel tension as the boss fight is going. But it's it's one of those things where it's like I know the pattern. If this pattern just goes faster, then like yeah, you're testing my skill. But at the same time, like this isn't going to trip me up be- just because it's going faster and it's and it's making this thing feel more repetitive for a boss boss fight that is lasting like five to six minutes and so i i don't love that aspect of the game but everything else i think is pretty pretty good i've been enjoying it are you gonna see it all the way through we'll see like it's definitely one of those ones where i'm playing it because of sea of stars i believe is called which is their upcoming rpg um that is meant to look like chrono trigger i watched the trailer for that thought that looked fantastic the game is in the same universe as the messenger which is making me which is what made me sure. pick up and start playing the messenger because i want to know what's going on in sea of stars um and also the messenger has been the messenger has been in my backlog and it's it's like the perfect time for backlog right now of course um i'm enjoying it but i don't have that that like feeling of being like oh i need to go back and play more of this now that i'm about four five hours into the game um and i'm past the twist and so the fact that I'm not feeling the, feeling it right now and knowing that the game is probably like 11 to 13 hours long, we'll see if I finish it. But right now, I don't I don't feel necessarily compelled to with where I'm at. But I'm just going to keep playing it until I get bored of it, which I'm not I don't think I'm bored of it yet. <laughs> well, and it's so. funny. You talk about you talk about backlogs, the a main game I want to talk about, because real quick. Yeah. I've been playing a ton of The Division 2 and Borderlands 3. Borderlands 3 is still working on the DLC with Jen. Uh, and then Division 2 uh, going through and, you know, chasing down all these uh, uh, rogue agents or whatever for the season pass and really having a great time. Like I said, uh, Wednesday, 2 p.m., I'm going to do the Division raid with the Kind of Funny Clan, including Fran, so if you want to watch that. Uh, but I love The Division 2 so much. Kevin, you got to come play. You got to come play, Kev. Have you downloaded oh, it yet, Come Kevin? play what? The Division 2. Oh, I was about to download that. You're a monster. You're I am uh, no, just on a side note. I will be doing tests to set up a laptop for uh, streaming purposes, and uh, oh. I'll probably download the Division Two uh, DLC pack that then. Okay, great, perfect. Yeah. Um, however, the one thing on my backlog that I I jumped into and haven't I've played a f- I'm in the level three of ten right now. Uh, Arise, a simple story. Uh, I don't oh. know. If you re- do you remember this? Is this the one with the Santa Claus looking dude? exactly this if you yes. remember during a state of play they ran this trailer for a rise of simple story and they gave off this okay he dies but then we start playing as him in the afterlife and we're like reliving his memories kind of thing and it had this beautiful art style to it um not cartoony but kind of cartoony uh and and it looked really great it looked really interesting it came out i forget when during some but i think well, actually i shouldn't say i forget when because I, well, I don't remember but i can look over here december 3rd it came out so there was a bunch of stuff going on when it came out not a great point for it and the reviews i remember being like meh it's all right it's this it's that and, and blah, blah, blah. so I, I always thought it looked interesting it's always been sitting on my live area and the other day i want to say monday or tuesday with the new schedule we have rolling it must have been tuesday the new schedule we have uh i had time to wake up and actually play something and it was what kind of mood am i in and you know i didn't want to jump into a shooter i didn't want to get into this and i was like you know what i for some reason i think you know i don't know how your moods are uh during shelter in place here but i i'm not mood swinging but i'm definitely like some days are worse than others yeah yeah, so i was like you know what this arise a simple story seems like something that would fit right now and I jumped into it and dude, did it hit the spot? Like, and I yeah. understand, I, I, you know, I glanced at some of the reviews before we were getting ready for this of like, why, you know, why didn't people click with it? What's going on? And I think, you know, Kotaku, uh, oh no, hold on, it wasn't Kotaku, sorry. It was Polygon, Polygon, Polygon. Uh, Polygon's headline is, Arise, a simple story is frustrating, but worth the journey. Uh, and so like, I, it, their sub thing is, touching narrative game suffers from platforming missteps. And for me, I get where they're coming from with that just off of the three levels. 
but I also understand I, my mind wrapped around it. I was doing the classic thing. I think we've all done in a gaming, a game where the platforming isn't Mario. It isn't that tight where you find mm-hmm. yourself over correcting shit and then falling and dying and getting pissed off. This one, I'm not falling and dying, but I was jumping and missing the platform because I was tweaking it. And finally I was like, you know what? This is simpler than I'm, I'm making it out to be. And so it is now just of hitting jump and having him jump and not, flicking the stick, not trying to micromanage, not whatever. And once I got that in my head of like, this isn't a platformer, don't treat it like one, I've had no problems with it. However, to get back on track of why, I think that's why I overlooked it originally, of like, all right, cool, this didn't live up to expectations, I'll get to it one day. Right now, like like I said, you start with yourself dying, you wake up in on this mount and you start reliving your memories. And it's clearly telling me the story of how I fell in love. Like I can see where this is, I, I, I'm already on the, path of where this is going so i assume eventually my wife's going to die here my heart's going to be broken i'm going to be crying on the couch but what they do with it is as they're telling you this story that you can steamroll through or go find the hidden memories around the way that all are just uh drawings of the characters interacting and like fleshing out the story you're already getting that i love like so many you talk about the share button so many of these drawings I've screenshotted because I want to use them as backgrounds or just have them because I think they're so beautiful and so cute. Um, the level and the gameplay itself is actually revolving around like uh, rewinding and or fast forwarding time. And so like you'll like, you know very early on in the game, right? You're like you, you start off on the first level and you need to you know it's a snowy environment, but you fast forward and it becomes spring and all the snow melts, so the water level rises. And so you have to go through and, you know, use that to access platforms to get to different things and then put it back to snow to have the snow hill to walk up to go get the thing. And then the next one is like, you know, you and the woman you fall in love with, but as children, like you're kite blowing away when you're kids. And so there are these, you know, it's this weird thing of like, these aren't like one for one memories. They're like, you know, the artistic interpretation of what your memories would be. So like there are these giant snails that you need to move around to use to hop across and do different things with it. And then now, like, where I left off, you know, we're uh, probably, what, I don't even know, 20s. We're in our 20s, right? Maybe we're a young couple or whatever, and we're, like, having to leave our village. And so now I'm using it to make walls come in tighter and freeze uh, boulder or not boulders, but, like, uh, stalactites, right, as they fall. Mm. Stalagmites. Yeah, yeah, you, stalagmites. Like, well, so they're, they're, they're both things, but I forget which is which. Tights. I forget which they're they both. Too. Yeah, right, you're an a cave scientist. Man. Yeah, well, I'm. I well, yeah. For I mean, like, it might. Maybe it's not a cave. Maybe it's just a passageway but, but above me. It's not me, ice, but... right? They're not icicles. No, 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 no. no, no it's not icicles. No. But ro- a giant rock falls, and you have to freeze it and use it to platform over, and then rewind to get. It's so I... stalag- stalagmites are rock formations. Stalactites are ice formations. Oh fuck! I thought it was. I thought one hung and one came from the ground. Shit! Fuck. No, he's wrong. You're a hundred percent right. Wait, really? Yeah. Wait, who's wait? Who's wrong? Who's right? Bless, you're very wrong. Thank oh, am you. I very wrong? Very wrong. Thank you. Oh. Anyways, the game is beautiful. I think the story it's telling is really beautiful. I think I know where it's going, but I haven't finished it, so I don't know. Uh, but again, it's one of those mood games where I, that morning I was in that bittersweet not you know emotionally vulnerable place to play it and then since then i have been like you know what i want to go shoot people in washington dc you know what no i'd rather you know pick cherries or whatever off my animal crossing town so i need to get back to it but i don't want to rush it i want to get back to it when i'm in the right headspace but mm. i i'm upset that i overlooked it for so long because it's a greg miller ass game and i really like it nice indeed yeah kevin i realized what i did is i looked up stalactite and it says hanging like an, an icicle and i read it as a hanging icicle <laughs> No God worries, dude. So have- stalagmite <laughs> is the one that is the mountain, right? I don't remember. What is the like? It's going from the ground well, you up. Just says stalactite is like icicles. Okay, let me read the definition for both. Here we so go. stalactite. <clears throat> this comes from dictionary.com. A tapering structure hanging like an icicle from the roof of a cave, formed of calcium salts deposited by dripping water. Then stalagmite from dictionary.com, a mound Nailed or tapering it. column rising from the floor of a cave. So stalagmites, yeah, from a ground up. Now, here's Might the thing. is like I, a mountain. I, Might exactly. is like a mountain. This is exactly oh. what I was like. And Jen's not in the room anymore. She was in here earlier when we were in. Uh, uh, and it's high and tight. Canada. High and tight. 
That's one way to do it. The way she described it was it, from the ground for a slag might right. It's the M coming up like a mountain, like you said, Kev. Oh. But then for slag tight right, it's the T and like dripping down. High and That's tight. Okay, well. High and tight is also oh, another thing yeah. you could say. God damn it. This High and tight is a weird one. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for 104, 104 PSN games ranked. <laughs> Each week, we look at the PlayStation blogs, drop. We pick a P- different PSN game to uh, play. We report back and rank it in one ridiculous list. You can keep up over at kindoffunny.com slash 104 list. Uh, right now, the rules are simple. We can't pick the same game. It can't be something that's AAA, and it shouldn't be something we're going to play anyway. Uh, right now, the top 10 of our current 26 games, and it's only going to get worse, read like this. Number one, Under Night, In Birth, EXE, Late, CLR. Bless- that was a blessing game. I'm not going to do that anymore. Yep. Number two, Round Guard. Number three, Darwin Project. Number four, Hidden Through Time. Number five, Kemiko. Number six, Foxy Land 2. Number seven, Snakey Bus. Number eight, Mosaic. Number nine, Zombie. Army Four, Dead War. And then number 10, Under Hero. This week, I played Rush Rover. Blessing played Biped. Bless, start me with Biped because I was excited about this. We talked about it on here. I saw Shuhei Yoshida tweeting about it. What is Biped and what did you think? So Biped is a co-op puzzle game where you play as like a little robot. And uh, for single play, I can't speak to multiplayer or co-op because I didn't get to play co-op because it's not online co-op, which I didn't figure out until I was ready to play it online co-op. Um, but in single player, you control like the two different legs of your small biped robot with each analog stick, and you, you you're basically making your way to the end of multiple levels. It has like it has Astrobot energy, but like yeah. not to the level of like quality and polish uh. as Astrobot. But it still has like it still carries that same like warmth and cuteness in a way that I think works. Like I really I really enjoyed my time with okay. biped. But yeah, like I said, right? Like I so throughout the week, I hit up my friend Rhea, and I was like, hey. Maria, if if we get you biped, or not if we get you biped, but if you get, would you be down to get biped, biped and play Did online? Did I buy this woman a copy me? of biped? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you didn't. No, of course. Uh, just don't check your uh, don't check your record. <laughs> the credit card statement for kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she was like, "Yeah, let's do it. I'm down. Dope." And we sat down yesterday to play it after like making plans to play it Saturday, but that not panning out and all this stuff. We sat down to play it. I was like, okay, cool. Let's play some online co-op biped and turn on the game. So there's no option for online. And that was very confusing because I could have sworn they said online. And I looked it up. It's online on Steam, not online on PlayStation, uh, which I got some feelings about. They said on uh they said on their Twitter though that they're working on share play for a PlayStation, which is a solution. Not good enough. Not good enough <laughs> biped. That said, I really, I, I really enjoyed my time with the game. It's uh it so it has, like I said, it has Astrobot energy. It has some of that some some of that similar cleverness from Astrobot in terms of its puzzle solutions. And so usually what you're doing, right? And I'm I wish I brought my controllers to my desk because it'd be easier to like show you. But like you're so right analog is for right leg, left analog is for left leg. You're walking like that. You are like like pressing your buttons up like one at a time like this in order to walk, which is pretty like it. It sounds frustrating. I think it works pretty well. Um, but then in certain services that aren't like the the grippy services, you can then like do like a like a glide move that'll just have you move like seamlessly, right? And you do that by okay. pressing both analog controllers or analog sticks in the same direction. Um, it's it's like eight levels long. Uh, the first six levels I really enjoyed my time with, but then I got toward the end, the last couple of levels, and that's where things start to fall apart because. The second to last level is a water level that is that that requires you to 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 navigate on these like rafts. But the thing is, the way you control the rafts are by like, man. Okay, so you're ba- you're basically you're moving on the rafts, and then you're 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 controlling them that way on the water, and that's like the bulk of this whole level in this game. It controls terribly. <laughs> right like that was a very frustrating level and it sucks because it's a pretty short game like it's like a three hour two to three hour long game and so that was frustrating and then i didn't even, i didn't even try the last level but from what i heard from maria she also she said that the last level was even worse um wow, wow. and so th- yeah that was kind of a bummer um but yeah overall like single player for this game for a game that's primarily co-op wasn't that bad like it was pretty it was pretty enjoyable considering that this is like a co-op game so i can't imagine like 
how it's like playing this game with a person. It sounds like it from what I've seen online of like Shuhei tweeting about it, and but then like other people I follow tweeting about it. It seems like it's a good time. Um, but yeah, overall, I, overall, I liked it. Sure, just a ringing endorsement from Bless. <laughs> yeah, overall, <laughs> I liked it. Where would you rank the last it? couple levels? Were kind of bummer, but uh, I would. Hmm. I would probably put it under Snakey Bus. Wow. So number, uh, number eight. eight. Yeah. Mosaic, and I liked it better than Under Hero. I liked it better than Zombie Army for and from what I remember of you talking about Mosaic, like I actually, actually, actually. Hmm. I might put it under Mosaic. At okay. number nine. Because okay. I remember I remember because you had issues with, with Mosaic, but overall you also liked that game, right? Yeah, I thought it was just too predictable, right? I thought it was, it was, you know, I knew, you know where that game's going from the start or whatever, but I look back fondly on it where I have like good memories of it and I enjoyed the, you know, the monotony of it then mixed with him finding art or whatever. But I never thought, yeah, yeah it's, it's very, it's trying to be that kind of game. Yeah. And also like the things, the things that I liked about Biped specifically were how clever the puzzles were. Like each of the levels are themed like a platformer game, but then like, for example, one of the one of the levels had it so that you are you in order to progress, you have to have a certain number of of feet on a platform, and you can like then take other biped robots, put them on platforms, take them off platforms, and you kind of have to like do a balancing. Like the game is very clever in terms of how it's de designed, but I at the at the end of the day, even though I I, I enjoyed it, I think it could have done a bit more to make that whole experience a bit better. Gotcha. Uh, mine so was nine. Rush Rover. I wanted on the record that I when I picked it last week blind. I did not know it was a Ratalika game. This was not a Greg Miller. I'm gonna get a bunch of easy trophies things, even though the trophies are embarrassingly easy on this one. So don't sweat it and don't have a problem with it. Um, so if you don't remember what sold me last week, uh, this is the description, right? Rush Rover is a top-down two is a 2D top-down shooter game with gameplay mechanics similar to traditional shmups. It includes random map generation, unique weapons, lots of different enemies, exciting boss battles, and a dynamic chiptune soundtrack. Uh, they talk about the roguelike uh, gameplay and then uh, upgrading your systems and yada yada yada. Um, I man, it's it's not a bad game, but it's totally forgettable. Like there's just no. Really? There's no charm to it. You know what I mean? Like I played it on Vita number one and like I was playing it and there's so much text happening on screen to explain what was going on. And then when I started playing it and I felt like there's got to be more to it, I stopped and went over to PlayStation 4 and actually got to read through it a bit more. And it was just like, oh, this is a very matter of fact, bam, here's what this game is. Like there's no tutorial. There's no real story. Like you get two different modes to choose from. You jump in and there's a lot of text on screen and then you just go out and start shooting up in this roguelite, right? And when you, you as you're going, you're earning this currency that you can apply to your, as once you get the, you know, points to your machine guns or whatever. Uh, but it's, it's not, again, not bad. I'm not trying to say it's a bad game, but I find it like wholly uninspired. Like it was that thing where I did, you know, I did two or three runs on Vita, maybe three or f probably three on PlayStation 4. And it was like, even though the trophies are, super easy like i have 47 percent. like not even trying right like i don't think i'll end up going back for the platinums in it it's just like all right like there's this is the one like there's not even this is what i'm talking about with these radalika ones right where there's like they have good games they have bad games they have all sorts of games but they put easy trophies on everything so something like foxy land 2 which i think is a, you know, we've talked about it multiple times here is a very competent and fun platformer then you have this was just like okay this is just walking around and shooting and like it's funny because for our list purposes right it compares so directly to it came from space and ate our brains, which is another, you know, running around, running gun, twin stick shooter, shoot everything. Cause that's how this controls to twin sticks. Um, I would play, it came from space and ate our brains every time over this one mm -hmm. where at least in, it came from space. Like I thought there was a lot of colors. There were varied enemies. Like I was switching up my weapons quicker. I was upgrading them faster. I was more engaged with it. Whereas this one, it was like, I didn't want to die, but then I would die and I wasn't upset and I didn't want to play or start again. So for you, bless it. I, I know this is rough. You didn't play this one, but for me, it's below. It came from space and I ate our brains. I think it is. Oh, maybe I was going to say then it was up to you because these are all blessing games from the 14 oh. to 18 range. But I would I would recommend Eclipse of Eclipse Edge of Light over this as well. So now I'm starting to fall down the list of where I'd actually put it. Right. Hmm. Wow. I, I've stumped myself now. Um, 
Yeah, I would recommend Katana Kami at number 22 over this as well. So I guess I'm going to put oh, it. Oh, wow. I would put it number 23 above Moons of wow. Madness. Uh, and below. So yeah, number 22 is Katana Kami. Number 23, Rush Rover. Number 24, Moons of Madness. Wow. new yeah. A new 23. You hate to see it. You, you hate, hate to see, to it. see it. Wow. Wow. Uh, but it's time to pick next week's games we'll play. Of course, we're reading from the drop on the PlayStation blog where our friend Justin uh, wrote it up. And let me tell you, it's going to be an interesting week. Uh, AFL Evolution 2 is here for PlayStation 4. I thought we already talked about this, but it's a, the it's a true reflection of the modern AFL game, which I think is the Australian Football League. Kind of looks like uh, rugby. Oh, yeah, we did talk. Right? Did we talk about this, this on... Oh, did we talk about this on uh, KOTD? I mean, we d- I've definitely seen this box art, and I only look at the box art on this show, so I think maybe this oh. game is supposed to have come out. Maybe AFL Revolution 1 came out last week. Maybe it's one of those weird I'm things. pretty sure we saw this last week. Oh. Right? Uh, up next is Blind Men. This is PlayStation 4 and PlayStation Vita. Uh, can Keegan make a name for himself, or will he fall victim to the charms of his enemy? As the nephew Keegan. of a, ret- a retired supervillain, uh, there's nothing Keegan wants more than to become one himself. And what better way than to join the League of Evil? All he needs to do is commit cr- a crime to complete his application. Okay. Uh, and right. then, it's, then there's a bunch of Double Dragon and Kuni, Kunio Kun uh, now, games Greg, coming I, I can confirm bundle? that AFL Evolution 2 was indeed on last week's drop, but it got delayed a week. Because okay. I opened up I opened up last week's drop and it just has it just has a cross out of, of like the, the date, April 9th, and then it says April 16th. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Um so then there's this retro brawler bundle, but they have all the games listed here separately. So hold on one sec. So I think you can buy yeah, okay. You can buy a bundle of all the games I'm about to talk about, which include Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2, Double Dragon 3, Renegade, Super Dodgeball, River City Ransom, Crash, Crashing the Boys Street Challenge <laughs> are in a $40 bundle, or you can buy them piecemeal uh, digitally as well. Do these count? Those are, I don't think those count. I, I feel like those are tri- the AAA games of back in the day. You back know? in the day. River City Ransom, I've heard. And Double Dragon, we have, I've played. Yeah. You know what I mean? Double Dragon is right. definitely like a 19... 19- 80s triple a game all right so then there we go those are all out which is gonna make it slim fucking pickings well let's keep going fishing sim world tour i'm sorry fishing sim world pro tour collector's edition comes out complete compete in career mode against over 100 pro anglers to become the best in the world play your way in custom multiplayer and online tournaments whilst using equipment from over 50 partners on real world venues targeting 29 different species of fish Freak Out Calamity TV Show comes to PlayStation 4. Freak oh, Out Calamity TV Show is a juicy, top-down, dual-stick shooter inspired by old-school arcade games and more recent die-and-retry shooters. In a, distri- in a disturbed dystopian... No. In a disturbed dystopia filled with mutants and killing machines, you're the star of a reality show, which might get a bit too real. Find your way through the deadly enemy waves, join the revolution, and try to take down uh, the evil Fizzy Corp. Okay. Uh, Super Solitaire F is out on PlayStation 4. In, I'm sorry. It, it's Spider, Spider Solitaire. Solitaire F. My apologies. <laughs> in Spider Solitaire F, we have prepared challenges that range from easy to very challenging. There are a total of 100 sets to solve for those learning how to play. There is a hint function. And you can also go back one in moves. Spider Solitaire F is perfect for calm and relaxing moments. We hope it will be an enjoyable challenge. Sweet fucking Jesus. What a day. Well, what a it. week. That's the week. What That's a week. week. Oh, wow. Um, Kevin, I forgot. You came up with a system last time. Bless and me, even an odd. Do you remember who gets what? Uh, One of you guys were even. One of you guys are odd. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Helpful. I, Helpful. I, I want to say I I went first last week, maybe. Okay. Oh, okay. man. So then we're done. Yeah. Then. This Blessing is, this is this even. Is... Blessing, okay. can you put I'm odd. Everybody knows e Greg's odd. That makes sense. On your hand and then don't wash it i got you yeah uh, i don't have a, i don't have a, i don't have a pen or a marker or anything just so then blade. I'll, no, I'll do it later now that i get to go first this is this is interesting right blind men is crazy and has super villains in it sure um fishing world why not freak out calamity tv show it sounds really tempting doesn't it i'm gonna do freak out calamity tv show because how many uh, this is another Top-down dual stick shooter. <laughs> I just did a dual stick shooter today. Why not? All right, so I'm doing yeah, Freak Out Calamity TV show. Blessing. All right. In your court. Oh man, where to go? Where to go? Because I was thinking about that one too. Yeah, well, and so now, now I'm between Blind Men, 
for the PS4 and PS Vita. Fishing uh-huh. World. Oh. Fishing or World. Spider, Spider Solitaire, Solitaire F. F. <laughs> because, dude, Spider Solitaire, I used to love Sp- Spider Solitaire back What's, when I was a kid. I, real quick, no I, love Sp- I love Solitaire on a PC like mm-hmm. anybody else. What is Spider Solitaire? Oh, dude, Spider Solitaire was next level. It was basically, and it's been forever, so I don't remember all the rules, but basically, like, instead of, like, the ways in which Solitaire was set up originally, you didn't have all the cars, cards in one row. And, oh, shoot, I think you're just taking cards off of other rows and then placing them in other rows until you get like a full uh like a, a, a full run and okay. then that that row then gets taken away and then you flip over the one behind like the card like the card that's face down at the end of the row and then okay. you start over and basically you're playing solitaire but it's in a way where instead of like having the deck and having like the the spots and all that stuff right you are it's just the rows it's, it's just the rows and also there's a hint button <laughs> <laughs> key to any game of spider <laughs> solitaire is the hint button <laughs> that hint button got me through some times all right what are you picking I, i'm gonna go go with blind men blind men all right Ugh. i'm taking freak out calamity tv blessing is taking blind men may god have mercy on our souls and we'll report next week in 104 psn games ranked uh blessing it's Craig. time for a PSN profile of the week. This is where one of you writes in to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, giving us your PSN name. We look at your trophies and decide if you are worthy of our love. Today, Joe, or I'm sorry, Jose writes in and then says, Hi, Greg and Blessing. I hope you're doing well. My PSN is Joseph2411, and I got platinum number 100 earlier this year with DMC5. But before checking my profile, please let me share with you. And the KF Best Friends, my celebration trailer, a love letter to almost every game part of this journey. Thank you guys for your commitment during these times and stay safe. Kevin, do we have the ability to watch this trailer? You guys won't be able to hear it. That's fine. Uh, we, I, well, actually, link? I want to talk oh, over I see it. it. So you, see, I don't, you don't need to like, it doesn't need to be a thing. But what you want to talk about somebody cool. Let's talk about Joseph, who put this up on his channel, Hyped for Games. Uh, if you find Hyped for Games, you can find my road to 100 platinum trophies. The description here says, Hey guys, my name is Joseph, and I love PlayStation trophies a lot, so I made a video featuring a piece of every game I've got this shiny virtual achievement to celebrate my 100th platinum trophy, which I'll be earning Tuesday, oh, wow. February 25th, on his Twitch channel, Hyped the number four games, Hyped for Games. Um, what a fucking awesome idea, Joseph. Yeah. That's Are really you fucking cool. Kidding me? That's amazing. Yeah, he's got. Uh, it's, I, we don't even look at his profile. We can just look at this. He's got Golden Abyss. He had a bunch of other Uncharted's in there. Uh, he got the Game of Thrones Platinum, of course. Hitman, uh, or, well, Hitman Go, uh, Lego Marvel or Lego Avengers. Uh, he has Taco like Master. quite a few God of War and Taco Master in there. Oh, yeah. So what I we just saw the Jack and Jill DX collection. So I love that Joseph whoring himself out the Greg Miller way. Why not get some cheap and easy ass fucking Platinums in here? That's oh yeah. About. Don't be afraid. Yeah, like got in there too. There. The order. He, I he, love this idea. He's got a whole bunch of the WWE games in there, which aren't a joke. Like some of them have time-consuming trophies. Maybe I'm wrong and I missed it, but the the Back to the Future, Telltale Platinum, Jurassic Park Legos. Yeah, look at this. Good job, Joseph. But now, yeah. So keep let it. A keep lot of wrestling playing, in this video. Hell yeah, get it, man. Get it. It's awesome because it's like it's like triple A game, Batman, Assassin's Creed, The Order, eighteen eighty six, wrestling, um, uh, Infamous Second Son, wrestling, <laughs> Telltale's Walking Dead, Spider Man, more wrestling. It's like, dude, go off, King. Life is so strange. Looking, looking through right now, like so, he's got a. We've already talked to him. Let it play, Kev. Uh, all his games here and all his platinum trophies. Uh, looking at what he's been working on recently, right now he has a seventy-five percent in Resident Evil Three. So I assume he's closing in on that. A uh, way out. He only has fourteen percent in. That's you can get that. Uh, Borderlands Three, forty-two percent, no platinum yet. Borderlands Three, a fun platinum. However, he does have the Control Platinum. That looks to be his most recent platinum. Uh, Days Gone. He's got eight percent of the trophies in there. Uh, it's interesting. Of oh, yeah, he has the Division Two platinum. Hell yeah, Joseph. He has a Death Stranding Platinum. Hell yeah, Joseph. Oh. Uh, and then, yeah, WWE 2K20, WWE 2K19, <laughs> Assassin's Creed Odyssey. That's Assassin's awesome. Creed, oh, no, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, no trophies. My apologies. Assassin's Creed Origins got the Platinum in it. Uh, man, look at that. He got 63% Marvel Ultimate Alliance. They're out there playing it. No. Ooh, Walking Dead, the final season, only has but those- 75% of the trophies. Oh, so you haven't even beat the game, is what that sounds yeah. like. 
Well, no, no. That final season is when they were like, do collectibles, do this to get this stuff. Really? Yeah, they were like, oh, wow. no, no, Telltale. You know what? I don't like this trophy list. Go out of business. And they did. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that's exactly how it happened. How it happened. You know. Uh, but no, jo- first off, I mean, like, we don't need to look through the list. Joseph, you've proven yourself as a dedicated platinum hunter if you're doing your own hype for gaming hype trailers about your hundred platinums. I fucking love that idea. You're amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, you're amazing too. Thank you for watching this episode of PS I Love You XOXO. Blessing, how do we do? I think we did great today, Greg. I think so too. And if you think so, ladies and gentlemen, it would mean a lot to us if you left us a review on iTunes, if you rated the podcast on wherever, if you shared it with your friends, subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Of course, if you have the means, it'd be great if you went to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, kicked us a few bucks, you get all sorts of cool perks like being able to watch us record the show live, get your questions read on the air, submit your PSN profile, and you can stick around right now for the post show we do each and every week. However, if you have no box to toss our way, head on over to youtube.com slash kind of funny games, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe each and every Tuesday morning. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. And then it's post show time. Kevin, are you ready for the post show? Kevin. Kevin. Uh, yeah. Uh, rolling post show in three, two, Hey, everybody. This is the post show. It's me, Greg. That's Blessing. Hey, Blessing. I got a question for Kevin. Kevin, did you need a countdown? Because we don't record these separately, do we? Yeah. We do? Like, we we stitch it together? We don't just keep going because we're live? Um, n- well... He cut. He means he cut. I, no, I did cut, but I can't remember, if I'm being honest, which one I'm supposed to do. Oh. So... I, gotcha. I think you... Yeah, it doesn't matter. Because this won't be on the full show... And the stream itself will be the live version, the Patreon version. Right, so I right, think right, this right. just makes it a little easier for Cool Greg. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. I like where you're going to edit okay. it anyway, right? Oh. Right. But, this, whatever. yeah, but like he'll have to clip that out. Technically, he doesn't have to edit it. Now it's, it's all that... done for the non. For the Man, oh yeah, because Ronan we did writes into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, Hey, Greg, or hey, guys, actually, do you think there's any particular reason why Sony has yet to show what the PlayStation 5 actually looks like? Just seems strange to have had articles and reveals, yet still we're living in 2013 where we know everything about Sony's console but the box itself. Honestly, I'm surprised to get a controller reveal without seeing the box. Thanks, Mount Content Ronan. Are you surprised, Wes, that we have not seen the PlayStation 5 in the flesh? No, not at all. Like, I isn't this the way they did it in 2013? Like, we, well, we got the controller. The at, oh, that's to say that, that it seemed that it feels like that again. Yeah, like yeah, in 2020, like, it shouldn't things be different? And I think, honestly, no. I think what happens is Xbox deserves more credit for doing things different. Yeah, I, I think what it is for PlayStation, if I had to imagine, is that they want the pop. They want, like, the that big splash when they do reveal it at yeah. the event. And I, I think, if, I think if that'll be event. the thing. It. <laughs> Or the stream, whatever it is, like when they're ready to do the whole big reveal of the PS5, right? I think the way you want to do it is you want to have it be so that you are you are talking about the games, talking about the features, and mm-hmm. then at the end you reveal the box and then you reveal the price, and and that's like all having all that information kind of kind of packaged together and delivered in 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 that way. I think allows for a a more controlled message and like a more controlled like hype train if you will uh yeah, i i i think on the xbox side the way that microsoft is doing it is also pretty interesting because yeah we got the box in december which is historically i think fairly early in terms of revealing a box um yeah no totally and unexpected yeah right? like we didn't, that was unexpected a leak coming into game and for or uh game and for coming into game awards game awards yeah and it's one of those things where like that i think that's played into my prediction that i don't know if i still have or not i'm still trying to like figure this out but in t- I, I had the prediction that there's going to be the second xbox console that'll be revealed at e3 right and it'll be the xbox one s to accompany the one one uh or xbox series s to accompany the the series x and i forgot who i think tim might have had that same i think multiple of us have, have had that prediction there's been rumors and all this stuff um and so that's why i think we saw the the box from xbox so early but yeah. who knows like I, I i think this this 
things being so different this time around and Sony already talking about the console and them talking about it since like early last year with the Wired articles and all this stuff, I think that has made this made things this time around different in a way where if like I think they could show the box whenever at this point, right? Like not only because we're getting close to June, but also because like what like why do we need to wait until that time to show the box? At this point, I think it is like a we might we may not know what's going on in the fall kind of thing. But even then, like I don't like it, it can happen whenever. Like I don't think I don't think they're on they're on like some sort of timer to show the box. Yeah, I don't either. Um I think that yeah it's so weird to talk about game awards and feel like it was a lifetime ago or oh yeah what the sure. plans are and where they are i mean like anything can happen now to the point that yeah i could see us waking up tomorrow and especially with our luck if it hasn't already happened and we haven't seen it while we've been recording that they've just revealed the box and this is what it is and this is how it's going to be and wired has an article and a photo and you know you know you'll hear more about it when the time comes i still think that it's not weird to do this because it is how it's been done and playstation has been doing this fairly traditional right i think again the wired articles and cerny's speech and the reels controller are trying to get the boring stuff out early you know the haptic feedback talk the hard drive talk all that stuff so when you do do a playstation 5 event or state of play or whatever it's going to be uh-huh. you just Doo-doo. have the good stuff you say what is that about do do when you do do you know did you say that or Kevin though, right? It was Kevin because I heard him. No, Kevin said that, but he was talking about what you were saying. Yeah, of course. Kevin's a child. Of course. Oh, we all we've been new. We all knew this. I know. Uh Snakey Bus is number one, wrote in to patreon.com slash kind of funny this week and said, How soon after the announcement of PlayStation 5 do you think we start hearing about PlayStation VR 2? Or do we even expect PlayStation VR 2 to be coming anytime soon? Much love. Hashtag Snakey Bus is number one on top 104. <laughs> It's awesome that like the developer of Snakey Bus listens to the show. That's really cool. I know, right? Who would have thought that Snakey Bus developers <laughs> listen to people? And that they're a patron. Uh, probably like a year, I imagine. Right. Like, I could see, I could see it being late 2021, maybe even 2022 that we start seeing and hearing about the PS or about PSVR two. Like, I, I expect it to be released probably if I had to predict 2022, but maybe reveal 2021. I, yeah, it's, you know, again, brand new world and everything's crazy right now. I would think that at the earliest you hear about it, holiday 2021, but that doesn't make much sense. Maybe you get a tease of it at holiday 2021 at the Game Awards, but then I would think you do very similar to what you do with it the first time around and do something at GDC 2022. So March, spring, you know, springtime. However, that's based on everything bounces back and everything's normal, right? Like, I had said on Gamescast when we sat down and did next-gen predictions, one of my predictions was, and it broke my heart to say it, was there won't be a PSVR 2. And at the time, my prediction was based on the fact that I needed a prediction. And mm-hmm. I think that at the, the launch of PlayStation 5, at the concept of PlayStation 5, and where we were when we did that prediction episode, PlayStation had all the hearts, mind, goodwill of, yes, we are going to do a PlayStation VR 2. But I was like, I think that the vision will change by the time we get there based on how the PlayStation 5 does, what they th- see as a success, so on and so forth. And so to have said that in what, I don't know, beginning of January and now be here where we're like, is the PlayStation 5 happening this year? Isn't it blah, blah, blah? Like they're delaying games indefinitely. I think as that starts to slide, the fu- for future projects start to slide too. And that, that development gets thrown off. And so right now, if everything was going right, I would have told you, probably 2022 right spring you see something from playstation vr2 but if everything's in free fall and being moved around and they don't know how the playstation 5 is going to launch and let's say they do launch the playstation 5 this holiday they don't have a stellar launch lineup because of delays they don't have as much product for playstation 5 i think then you see a more conservative playstation going forward in 2021 that's trying to get their big games out trying to make sure you understand why the playstation 5 is great trying to understand the actual market they're making games in now and how much money and disposable income you have post COVID. And then you get into this interesting thing of when is the right time to launch a very granted PlayStation VR has done incredibly done way better than people thought it was, but still a niche device that doesn't have this wide mass market appeal. That is a weird PlayStation pet project in a time where the market is going to be the place or the video game market is going to be trying to 
figure out how to counteract the ripples we keep talking about with this pandemic. Hmm. I can see that. You could see it. I can see that. I'm, I'm really hoping perfectly. you did. You did lay it out perfectly. I'm actually very excited for what PSVR two might entail. Like totally. Like what improvements have, like what, what have they learned from PSVR one, like being the first thing, but then also like, do you bring out even bigger bangers in terms of games for PSVR and two? And what, do, what do those games look like? Like, are we getting blood and truth Two and Astrobot two, or are we, are we getting like, like, I don't know, man, like a Spider-Man VR game that is tailor made or like, I guess Iron Man VR is kind of the, what yeah. that would kind of be. <laughs> are we uh, Spider-Man? No. Oh wait, hold on. That exists. <laughs> yeah. It's actually yeah that pretty much sometimes. exists. Uh, but like, are we like God of War VR or something along like what, because if, if if they do PSVR too, I feel I think that like signifies that they're way more like they're diving deeper into like the the committal to it, like being all about VR. Because they they've been like committed to VR. You know, I'm not I'm not really I'm not I've not really had a complaint about PlayStation and how uh, they've treated VR so far. Like they, they've done a good job of making sure games are coming out consistently and, and that we're getting 100%. good all, this, all that stuff. Yeah. But I'm curious, and if they if they if they take the next step into PSVR two. What does that next step also look like in terms of games? And do they commit harder in making bigger and better games for it? Yeah, I, I'm going to be fascinated because, again, I do think they launched with the best intentions. And it, it those initial launch numbers obviously superseded what they wanted or thought. And so then since then, I won't, it's not that the market's cooled, but VR isn't this runaway success. And it isn't this like juggernaut you can't ignore. PlayStation could easily ignore it and move away. You know, did or does half-life alex inspire enough people to be making more cool vr games are there more deals and more things like iron man vr that are up their sleeve you know is it the even the form factor of a playstation vr 2 that i want to be wireless but i know would be so tough even if it was it doesn't need the camera that's all built in it's looking down at my controller in my hand for better thing better positioning and i had a wire running off of it like these are all things that are super enticing and super cool but i say all this knowing in the same vein as much as i love my playstation vr I have the folder on my PlayStation 4 that's VR games, right? And I keep adding stuff to it, but I haven't turned it on in a while. Like, there's mm-hmm. stuff I want to do, but it's that thing of, like, ugh, do I really want to, like, move the coffee table and put on the headset and do the, I'm, you know, the pro, the, I don't have the pro, or I don't have the VR box that has the pro pass through. So it's like I have to disconnect things and reconnect things. And it's just like, I love this. I love that device, but it's not for me an everyday device. It's a very much, I have to be in that mood. Yeah, for sure. By the way, I just got a, a tweet uh, from at trip t t y k on Twitter that uh-huh. says a stalactite hangs tight from the ceiling. I think my T thing makes as much High sense as tight. that. High and tight. High and tight. Thank you, Kevin. Ladies and gentlemen, Thanks, this man. has been your post show for PS I Love You XOXO episode 15. Thank you for your support on Patreon. Tell your mom and your dad to do it. Your little sister, don't. We don't want her. All right. Tell her to stay away. All right. All right. Thank you. (laughs) Until next time, we love you. High and tight.